sets your butane torches to high and your expectations to low. Coming to you from the Cigar Cave in the hills of Steel City, get ready to get your fix. This is the Cigar Junkies Podcast. Welcome to the Cigar Junkies Podcast. The cigar show for the community by the community. A forum that talks stogies, booze, food, and anything else in the cigar lifestyle. If you're looking for ratings, negativity, or an authority on all things cigars, you came to the wrong place. Whether you like what you hear or not, please join the conversation and let us know by finding us at the Cigar Junkies Facebook group or contacting us at the Cigar Junkies at gmail.com. What's up, junkies? Here we go again. Welcome. We are live. We've got a Zoom guest. It is exciting because... Uh, I think this is going to go a little better than the last time. Yeah. I think we ironed out some of the wrinkles. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, you guys know us. I'm Corey Banks. This is Samuel Hoffman. We are the Cigar Junkies. And joining us today live via Zoom is Tommy Werther of Line of Duty Cigars. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. So uh, it was either this or, dr- either this or drink alone on my couch. Like, uh, this, was, this was a no-brainer. <laughs> Really? Because that 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 sounds a little better to me. I think. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> not that, that's a good night. <laughs> <laughs> not, um, not a bad night. Uh, well, let's let's just say that, that. That's the other six nights of my week, though. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> fair enough. Uh, so Tom Werther, owner of uh, Line of Duty, and then uh, you were just t- starting to tell us that uh, you have your own podcast that uh, you're a part of. Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, we started it about a year and a half ago called um, the Blue Room. So it, what happened was. Uh, there's a group I work with called BBO, Brothers Before Others, and it started off as a, as a police charity, and it turned into more of a, like a human humanity charity. We do a lot of great stuff. The, the main goal is to send a, uh, a flower arrangement to every line of duty police funeral in the country, and it's just expanded. So they wanted to do a podcast to just discuss the, the problems in, the, in our community from our point of view and from the public's point of view. You know, listen, we're not perfect. Every every uh, uh, vocation has got 10% that are kind of screwed up, and police are not away from that. Military is not away from that. We've got people that shouldn't be cops. We have teachers that shouldn't be teachers. So we really kind of dug into that to humanize what we do. And, uh, we you know, we had a good run. We're, we're in a, a bit of a delay right now while we rebuild the studio. But uh, So I totally dig what you guys are doing. Have you considered um, using your garage? Yeah, it's a popular place. No, it's well, very cheap. <laughs> it's not. It started well. Here's the thing: we uh, we were invited uh, by a group that own a, a gentleman in Jersey that owns his own studio. I'm I'm in New York. He's got a professional studio already set up that he was uh, leasing, uh, you know, or renting time out to people to do their own podcasts. He gave it to us for free because he's a nice. retired cop, uh, and we had a great run with him. And then we decided to move on and build a, a national headquarters in Phillipsburg, New Jersey. And in that national headquarters is a de- dedicated studio for this show and a couple of others. Oh, Very cool. Wow. So it's, That's it's awesome. really, it, yeah, it's, and it's, it's a full on, it's an old, it's, it's funny enough. It's an old jailhouse in <laughs> Phyllis, awesome. New Jersey from like the 1800s. It still has bars on the windows and shit. That's awesome. So, and I, the one thing I had uh, talked about was that uh, with the guy that's building it was I have a long drive. I'm an hour and a half, hour and 45 minute drive from home to that studio. So no worries, we're going to build your bunk room. So I basically have a place to sleep. I got a bathroom. I got a a, a, a studio. Uh, yeah, it, it, we have a good following. That the, the charity is doing well. So I will be the spokesperson for the charity as well as uh, you know helping out our law enforcement community, our military community, to spread the word of the good stuff that we do. <laughs> Sam hadn't considered and that it, uh, even though his phone's on silent. Done. He's like, I'm out of here. It, well, his phone's on silent, silent, but he hadn't considered the fact that the vibration of his phone would transmit through the uh, the microphone stand. Uh, so, you know, something just for us to keep in mind there. Maybe uh, that's not good enough. Maybe we need to go full silent, no vibration. Uh, I do have a suggestion well, leave for it, you. Leave it in the bathroom. It's a <laughs> – I got a lowbrow suggestion for you. So I think you guys, the Blue Room, should do a big formal event every year. You can call it the blue ball. The blue ball. The blue I ball. like it. Yeah, I absolutely. like it. You can only come by yourself. Yep. No dates. And then if you <laughs> come, uh, when you leave from that point on, you are forever known as one of the blue ballers. You're you're a blue baller. <laughs> That's it. OG. That's o- it. OG blue ball. 
absolutely. So uh, we are smoking the line of duty grunt today. Uh, we are doing the 6x52 Toro. What can you tell me about the stick? I can tell you that it is, well, it, first of all, it's made out of Vea Negra by James Brown of Black Label Trading Company. That guy and if you've ever see. had anything from VLTC or Blackworks, you know that James Brown blends heavy. Everything is strong. There's no, there's no mild in James Brown's library of cigars, you know? So it's, it's a medium, it, it's a mild cigar from our perspective, from what we offer, but it's still not mild, like Connecticut mild, no flavor, no taste. So it's the it's my morning stick. It's a, uh, a sun grown wrapper, a Nicaraguan filler wrapper with an Ecuadorian binder, and it's just a really smooth. All, all of our cigars we kind of approach this the same way that that they would uh, kind of burn evenly the, the same way they would burn and taste the same from start to finish. I didn't want the traditional one or two changes in in, in flavor profile throughout because I wanted you to enjoy the cigar sh straight through. There's a slight turn but more often than not when you have a stronger cigar for me my experience was that that last third got very strong and you couldn't finish it sure so the yeah. kind of all all of our blends they don't do a whole lot of change in the middle so if you like what you're what you're what you're getting right now you're gonna love it when you get to the end of it nice no i i think it's it's very interesting coming right out of the gate um you're you're right it's not a, a ridiculously powerful cigar um but it's it's interesting as soon as you start smoking it like uh one of the things about the way that i smoke cigars is unfortunately i don't typically know if i'm gonna like a stick until i get about an inch in that's in most cases it's not all the time but that seems to be the typical situation for me is that the first the first inch of a cigar doesn't usually excite me a whole lot. It takes that whole blend to get kicking on all cylinders before I can really tell like, hey, this is definitely up my alley and in my wheelhouse. Um, but immediately for me, I'd say by a, by a quarter of an inch into this, I could tell that this is something that I could smoke in my daily rotation all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's I, I find it very difficult. Uh, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I I was a stand up comedian. Uh, for a couple of years in New York City and did a lot of work on stage and in, in all the you know the major places and and when you say things like uh, the first inch and I, I was an inch in and a quarter inch in it's very difficult not to go right to make a not a, to run know, with it joke. <laughs> exactly uh, but we're okay. here and we're trying to be professional no we're not <laughs> no, 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 no we're, we're not, not. <laughs> okay so our name is not uh, cigar junkies just because it was the last one that was available <laughs> Uh, we we want to be very clear from the get go that there is nothing about us in this program <laughs> that, that is, you you should look up to or uh, respect as an authority aspire, source. Aspire to. We are two jackasses and microphones. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Wait, well, guess guess who, guess who your guest is? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it says the, it right in our the intro. Jackass, man. The jackass in front of a computer. Jackass. Yeah, it says it right in our intro, man. If you're looking for ratings, negativity, and authority on all things cigars, you're yeah, in no, the no. wrong place because that is not that is not us. We are here to have fun, hang out, and enjoy people's company. So yeah, whole whole different uh, whole different program. Um, but like I said, when you're, you're a cigar uh, podcast or what people think is they expect a certain thing. Right. Oh, we're going to talk about this, and like I said, how would you get started? Well, who who was your influences, and what do you aspire? Like, no, no, we're just going to hang out and both. Like, yep. this is a conversation that we're having. If I was in a lounge, I do events. You know, yeah. obviously, I do events, and when I go to an event, I don't typically spend a whole lot of time in front of the table speaking to people to preach to them about how great this cigar is. That's what my rep does. What I do is I go in the back. And I hang out with the guys and the women that are smoking cigars, and I break balls, and we talk about sports, and we laugh, and we goof off, because that's where I think my strength is. I don't make cigars. I don't blend them. I can tell you as much as what my manufacturer tells me about them, where the tobacco comes from, but my strength is hanging out with you and laughing and breaking balls, and then when you leave, you say, hey, that was a really good cigar, and that guy's not an asshole. <laughs> well, that's my goal. <laughs> I mean, not an asshole. Uh, uh, they, let's give that's, it some time. Yeah. Let's give it some time. We'll find out about that. Well, it's only been like three minutes. So. Is, is your over under sure better than fifty percent? Oh, okay. that, that's that's uh, what I'm gonna know. Ooh. Right. That's a tough one. Depends right. on where I am. 
Well, let's get Depends the respectable I... stuff out of the way. Um, <laughs> why don't you go ahead and uh, tell the kids at home uh, what's different about Line of Duty cigars? And uh, obviously, you guys have a uh, you know a whole mantra behind the idea of what you're doing. And uh, why don't you go ahead and let them know what it is? Sure. So uh, I'll give you a, a quick blurb on me is that I'm a retired New York City police detective. And when I retired, I knew I wanted to start a company. I didn't know what it was going to be, but I knew the name. It was going to be Line of Duty. So when we talk about Line of Duty and police speak, Line of Duty death, Line of Duty injury. Right. These are guys, men and women that were working, and they were either killed or they were hurt, injured badly. I happened to be one of them. I, I retired on a disability, but he got hit by a car while I was working. Cool. And I knew I wanted to do that, and I wanted to raise money for families that uh, had line of duty deaths in their family. So I jumped around a little bit. I was going to do wine first and then get the cigars. And then the FDA in 2016 said, if you know, if you weren't uh, 2015, if you weren't on the shelves by August of 16, you couldn't introduce a new cigar, new blend, new brand. Right. So I jumped in with two feet and just said, all right, I guess I'm going to learn this industry. I've been smoking cigars for 25 years at that point. Uh, so that's what we did. We jumped in, and we had 11 charities. So when you went on the website, we started with a, um, a one, one uh, manufacturer, and our cigars were strictly e-commerce. I didn't want to go to stores. I didn't want to be out there shucking and jiving, and, and you know, I wanted to be able to do everything from the house. You know, I got kids at home. I got married. My wife is here. And uh, so you would go on the website, and you would order your product, and then you would choose the charity that you wanted me to donate to. And there was a drop-down menu for police, fire, and military. Yeah, nice. It was about 11 or 12 cool. at some point. Uh, now we're down to two. We do Tunnel of Towers, and we do BBO, the Brothers Before Others, two very near and dear charities to my heart. Uh, they very similarly handle those three communities. And um, that's what I did. I did that. And then we transitioned into the wholesale end of it by going to uh, uh, James Brown over at uh, Van Negra. I told I had a Skype with him, had a conversation, 40 minutes, and he said, oh, okay. And at, my, at that point, I'm sitting at my kitchen table. I'm thinking, I guess, you know, we're not, we're not going there. And he <laughs> says, uh, when are you coming? I said, what are you talking about? He said, I need, you, you need to come here and, and start test funding with me. And I said, I could probably get a flight tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and they were in the middle of their own transition. So they had a, a smaller factory in uh, downtown Esteli, Nicaragua. And they had bought uh, another factory or at least uh, whatever their dynamics there. They took over another factory that was much bigger. And I met them there a month later and we test blended stuff and uh, hit it out of the park. So that's what we're doing. 10% of all of our sales go to uh, one of those two charities. So uh, on the website, so the, the I do have cigars on the website still that are not made out of Van Negra. They're made at a separate factory and they're the you know, the seven to eight dollar cigars that a lot of my followers have been accustomed to for the past six years. And I don't want to remove them just yet. Uh, and they get to choose the charity still. Nice. And then on the wholesale side, uh, 10 percent, I just split it. Half goes to BBO, half goes to Tunnel Towers. And we're just, you know, cruising along. Nice. That's that's awesome. man. that's a really cool way of looking at it. And the fact that you. Like you give the option for the different charities. Like I, I, I love any organization that allows you to choose the charity that it's going to. Because like you know, uh, you might hate firefighters. Yeah, yeah, that might that might be a negative thing for you. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, <laughs> you've got the, you know, what is it? Uh, Los Cayotes. He's got the same cigar in two boxes. You pick the red yeah, band. Steve. Yeah, you, you know, you pick the red band. You pick the blue band. And uh, yep. yeah, I'm not sure how he's set up with like splitting it, but I, I like the fact that you can kind of split your support by knowing which one you're buying and mm -hmm. things along that line it uh, i just i think that anybody who does that's great because you're giving the customer that choice so. you give you give them the choice you also give them back and i also provide a, a heavy discount for any event golf outing steak night cigar night uh that is uh raising money for police fire military charity we i just say send me an email take a look at the website what do you want nice. i'm not competing with the shops because what you buy in the shop is being made by james brown Right. What you buy on the website is being made by La Familia, which is another factory in Esteli. It's a it's a great tobacco. It's a great cigar, but it's just two different communities uh, that I'm 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 going after. You know, there there are folks that will never pay more than ten dollars for a cigar, right? 
So th those guys, those men and women, hopefully will continue to support our six to seven dollar brand. And it, again, it's not about the drop in the quality. It's a great stick. Yeah. You want a Ford or you want a Maserati? Right. Either car is going to get you to your destination. Yeah. How much do you want to spend to get to your destination? You know. That, no, I, so yeah, it's, uh, it's good stuff. I, I like. I, I actually put a. Um, I don't know if it's too early, but we'll repeat it later on. But I did add a uh, uh, coupon code on the website, lineofdutycigars.com, for JTT, uh, yeah. which is a 20% off discount. If you just go on the website, lineofdutycigars.com, whatever you order, put JTT in the, discount, in the, in the uh, coupon code box, you'll get 20% off anything, and I think I'm going to run that till Wednesday. And our listeners uh, know that uh, obviously stands for uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, home improvement fame. <laughs> So huge home improvement because Tim <laughs> Allen was taken. I couldn't put TA. I didn't want them to confuse it with tits and ass, so I couldn't put TA. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a bit of a problem, huh? <laughs> well, you could have been TT TT Tim Taylor. I have a stuttering condition today uh, that just randomly seemed to have popped up out of nowhere. Um, that, man, my my kids have told me for years that I'm 50 percent Homer Simpson, 50 percent uh, Tim Taylor. So uh, <laughs> you blend right in. Maybe maybe that's the reason for the tool background. That's that. Yeah. yeah, Corey the uh, Tool Man Banks, um, something like that. You got you got, you got Homer's hair. Yes, I do. Thank you, thank you for noticing. <laughs> I've been I've been working real hard on it. Uh, no, I, I'm starting to say that I, I like the fact that you have you kind of have it split. Like you have your online and you have your your retailers separated. I think that's really cool. I think that's a lot yeah. of a lot of respect for the retailers. No. Um, uh, you and I haven't talked. Um, I don't know if you're aware or familiar with it but so the cigar junkies is our podcast and then uh just the tip cigars is a shop that i'm opening here in south hills of pittsburgh um so we're gonna have you guys in there uh allegedly, allegedly. he's gonna open it yeah at some point <laughs> <laughs> when we get through the bureaucracy it'll be open yeah. um i gotta tell you I was, I was in pittsburgh a couple i guess about six weeks ago with mike king who okay. introduced us obviously uh mike's great great guy uh what a hell of a cigar town Right. I mean, you know, I, I just came back from Tampa. I did a lot of running around Tampa, uh, Orlando, whatnot. Pittsburgh, um, you know, Atlanta's a good cigar town. I think Chicago is a pretty decent cigar town. Baltimore actually is a pretty good cigar town too. But Pittsburgh, I just felt like I grew up in a really, particularly in New York City, and they think, ah, oh, you know, pretentious asshole, blah. I grew up in a really small town. Um, I call it the suburbs, even though it's in the five boroughs, but it's like, like a regular blue collar. You know, it's a small portion of the five boroughs where in Pittsburgh, I felt like everything felt like that. Mm -hmm. Every shop I went to, Leaning House, like yeah. it just, you know, Allegheny, like just every shop I went to, I felt like this is a shop that if it was around the corner from my house, that would be my home shop. Yeah. Like just a great environment there. And we're a soon to be fine establishment that will uh, hopefully be filling in on that same uh, background and that same mentality, the way that the shop's run, because it, it is, it's a brotherhood here and. It's really cool because the people are super faithful to their shop, but they also travel. So everybody shares everything all the time. Yeah. And the great thing is that it doesn't matter, right? Like, that's the thing about the cigar shop is, um, you know, I've sat in a lot of shops around here where I've got a guy in, a, you know, $1,500 suit uh, checking his stock options with his buddies just coming back, you know, and another guy coming back from the golf course. And then I've got a guy in a prison guard uniform. Uh, sitting on the couch yep. across from bullshitting about the same topic, right? Yep. Like with with a pr with a prisoner chained to him, probably. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it, it, on occasion, you know, I try not to squeal <laughs> on anybody. Um, you know, I know you're a police officer, we're a police officer, and all, but uh, New York, I mean, I, I don't know which side of the line you were on, so I don't want to. Yeah. We're, not, we're not dropping dimes. We don't <laughs> drop dimes. Yeah, no, I. So we, we didn't do our normal like what we did this week, but I, I yesterday I was at a private event at uh, Casa de Monte Cristo in Whippany. I don't know if you're familiar with Whippany, New Jersey. Uh, if you've been uh, there, yeah, I do, and I know Casa Monte Cristo. It's one of my shops in uh, Manhattan that I visit often. Nice. Yeah, th this one was beautiful. Um, but we were at an event there, and it just proved like the great equalizer, like the, the you know the amount of Bugattis in the parking lot last night oh, with for, this, okay. for this party was just amazing. And I'm walking around like, I still feel like I belong here. Like I don't, but I'm cool with it. Like yeah. every, you know, you're, it's you're just, driving the Chevy Nova that uh, Eddie Murphy <laughs> drove in the Beverly Hills cop, right? And you pull <laughs> next to the Bugatti. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm more along the lines of uncle Buck's car. <laughs> <laughs> I pull up and people drop. No, I just, I, 
I, I love the fact that, you know, the cigars are the great equalizer, and with the exception of a couple shops here and there throughout the country, I feel like it's pretty consistent that everywhere it's going to be welcoming and everybody's going to be equal when you walk in the door, and I, I think that's just a really cool part of it, and, you know, that's actually a lot of the reason I'm getting into it, you know? Yeah. Well, as a brand owner, I, you know, we have, we have a good footprint here in New York, but Pittsburgh is a great footprint. Florida is a great footprint. What I found, in, especially Pittsburgh and Florida, those the, the two bigger markets for me right now, I get introduced to a, a shop owner, and we'll have a conversation. We're hanging out for an hour. We're having a glass of beer or wine or whatever. And, and then he'll turn to my rep and say, hey, did you go over to see so-and-so at that shop? He'll, he, he'll take you in a minute. Oh, try that over there, blah, blah. Like, I know it's your I'm, – I've I'm, I'm been a small business owner for 30 years. I've had multiple different businesses. And – when I owned the restaurant, somebody walked in. I don't think I'd say, go to the guy across the street. He's got better risotto than me, you right. know, because that's what they're looking for. That, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for better food. Right. Where in the cigar industry, they're not looking for a better cigar because we're all selling the same shit. Yep. And they just say, I want to see you on his shelf. I want to see you on her shelf. Yeah. If, if I was you blown just, away by it. If you start a group with this name, I want royalties. Um, but you, you could almost call it uh, competitors with camaraderie, right? right? Because... <laughs> everybody's after you when yeah. you're in the cigar industry, right? Like th there's, there's the FDA, there's uh, public perception. You get lumped in with other tobacco products. Yes. And Baby. like, yeah, sure. so everybody's trying to shut you down. So as much as you're trying to make the best out of your own business, you have to stand together or else everybody goes down. And we're, yeah. I mean, we're blessed in Pennsylvania. We got famous, we got Holtz, we've got, uh, CI, you know, we, we, we've got the lobbying group for like, not just national, like they're lobbying for everybody, but they, they're going at it at a state level and they're keeping things reasonable for us here. And you, and you don't have uh tobacco sales tax, which right. is, well, honestly, that's, that's, that's the big deal. That's, that's the big deal right there. Yeah. That's directly so, uh, because of the online giants having their yeah. bases of yeah. operation in Pennsylvania. Well, like like those they'd guys have to got move. together. Yeah. The, all those companies you just mentioned, they, they have a, an association. They got together and they went out and they and they fought for it. I like they fought for it. The and out. luckily, we get we we get the reciprocal effect of it. You know, sure. they they fought for it and we're reaping the rewards for it, which is great. But so do the customers. That's the other fun part. I mean, we were just we talked to some guys from California. They do another podcast and you know, what did he say? It was sixty seven percent that they're paying. Oh, it's stupid. On, on a cigar, it's still better than Canada and Australia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so Dude, New York, New York, the wholesale tax is seventy five percent. Jeez. So we were in, we were in the uh, um, uh, Casa de Monte Cristo uh, on Fifty Second Street, Second Avenue, a couple nights ago, and my buddy bought a box of Padron sixty four anniversaries. Twenty four in the box. That here. Oh, you don't even know. So <laughs> it was marked four hundred and eight dollars or whatnot, and he he goes to the register, and then he finally rang out it. Like seven oh two. So the next day, I'm with him, and he's telling me the story. And I said that that something's not right there. Something's not right there. We go to the shop, and sure enough, it says right on the box the uh, tobacco wholesale tax is not included, which is seventy five percent. So on four hundred dollars, three hundred dollars is tax. You better be good now, at so math. Now, now you're at seven. Now you're at seven hundred. You can go to Holtz.com and get that box for four fifteen, four twenty. Yeah. It's killing. It's killing the small shops. It's killing, especially in New York. New Jersey's only like thirty or thirty-five percent, which is a little bit better. But in New York, they're crushing these guys. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't terrible because uh, I bought a couple there last night, and I mean, it wasn't bad tax-wise. I, I noticed the prices were a little bit higher, but I mean, Casa de Monte Cristo being as big as they are, and you know, owned by who they are, and all that jazz. Yeah, I think they're owned by General or uh, uh, Altidus. Uh, uh, Altidus, right? Yeah, and they. I think they get a, a little better pricing, and I think they actually pass that on to their customers yeah. a little bit. I think they, they do a good job of that where they try and keep it. Because, I mean, you figure it's only, what, 25 minutes to Pennsylvania from there, and their shop's right on the border for exactly that reason. So, I mean, those guys, they seem to price pretty fair in that area. Uh, yeah, knowing that you're going to hop over. Yeah. So, Tommy, you talk about uh, the idea of you considered going with wine. And you ended up ultimately doing cigars. You talked about local, the, sh the feel of a local shop in your neighborhood. How'd you get into them? Uh, what was your experience? Uh, have you been a cigar smoker for a long time? Did you convert uh, yeah, because of Seinfeld so in the 90s or what? I'm 50. I started smoking cigars when I was 17. So what, 71 is uh, about 90, 88, 89, right out of high school. 
And when I, I, I dabbled a little bit, you know, Swisher Sweets crap and just to, you know, mess around. But then when I, when I got on the police department in 94, that's when I started to smoke more seriously. Uh, I think Cigar Aficionado had, had launched probably within two years of that. So I started getting the magazines and seeing what was out there because, you know, back, you know, before the interwebs were so big, you only got what was in your local shop. Right. And your local shop might have been a, a legit cigar store or it might just been a convenience store. It might have been a gas station. So you didn't know what was there. You didn't know what the reviews were. So you get, I'd get this Cigar Aficionado magazine and I would see the, you know, the top X and then I would keep trying stuff until I narrowed it down. And I'm, I'm a simplest. I, I didn't want 50. I just wanted like three. Yeah. Hoya de Monterey, uh, the Hoya de Monterey Excalibur number two was my go to forever. That was like the first one where I would actually buy boxes of because they weren't super expensive. And as a cop in the Bronx, and the Bronx is a bit of a shithole. So you never knew that if you, you thought you had 20 minutes to chill out, and then five minutes later, you were chasing some guy down the street. Right. So you lose your cigar. So it was a moderately priced cigar. And then we wound up finding a, a local guy in the Bronx actually rolled cigars. And we would get uh, 50 cigars for 100 bucks, oh, me and nice. my partner. So we, we split it. Two bucks a stick. Didn't care if I threw it out the window. Yep. Um, but that's where it started. And then it just progressively went. And then as your palate develops, and then I got into wine and stuff, and I tried different wines, and I started eating more cheese. I don't know how that all came in, but it, but it was just like the the cigar, wine, and cheese. Those three things are the, were the three items that I just wanted to have the best of that I could afford. Yeah. You yeah. know, um, steak is steak. Right? You're not going to say, oh, that, that filet mignon is better than that filet mignon. It's all the same shit. <laughs> when you have so many options for red wine, you say, well, here's my budget. I mm -hmm. want the best file of olive wine I can find. So you drink 50 of them, and I, I would keep notes. I did yeah. the same thing with cigars. I, I buy everything different. I take a note and say, oh, this is what I like. This is what I want to smoke. Now, mind you, since I started my company, I got, well, you can't see it, but I got a humidor right here behind me, which got probably... Five thousand, four thousand dollars, four thousand sticks in it from eight years ago. Yeah, I just stopped, stopped smoking them because now I, I never want to get stopped in the street and say, "Hey, what are you smoking?" And it's not a line of duty. Right. Yeah. I don't go to a shop and say, "If it's a shop that carries line of duty, I buy it there to support them." And then people say, "Hey, what do you have?" Uh, and then that's just the, how it grew. I just again, I, I knew I wanted to do something to give back, and I wanted to. There's only certain. Listen, everyone and their mother's got a t-shirt company. How many freaking t-shirts you're gonna have? Right. How many mugs you're gonna have? No, I want you to have it now, enjoy it now, and come back and get and buy it again. Yeah. Well, speaking so, of merchandise, yeah. I noticed on your website, on your website, you have uh, customizable ashtrays where you can have a yeah. photo put in the ashtray. Um, very yeah. cool. Very nice design. Uh, I have a thought on a way that I think you could double the uh, amount of ashtrays that you sell. Uh-oh. And uh, I would market it as uh, get a, a ashtray with your ex's picture in it. <laughs> oh. So you could just ash right on their face all the time. On, their, on, their, yeah, on that, that face or their ass. That was a little oh, bit of a steal. Right. Well, there was a bar uh, down the street from my house for a while that uh, they had a sign up that says, we've got beer colder than your ex's heart. And I always thought that was oh, genius wait, 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 marketing. Wait, where's that? Where's <laughs> that? In Pittsburgh, in the Pittsburgh region, uh, oh. Castle Shannon. Uh, I think they're under different uh, different ownership now. Some the mine something. Um, there, but yeah. there's a place I go to in Sayre, Pennsylvania. Yeah, because I have a cabin up by Binghamton, and it's six miles away from Sayre, Pennsylvania, which is would be the uh, southeast corner of your great state, and. That's the shirt that they all wear there. Yeah. Our beer is colder than your ex's heart. There you go. That's what I was like. I thought it was original. Yeah. I, I don't know. You just ruined it for me now. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, there you go. You won't feel bad about piggybacking off of the idea and uh, saying, hey, no. put your ex's, <laughs> you know, we got uh, we got shooting targets and ashtrays. You can put your ex's faces go. on them, you know? So those so those ashtrays, so we do, I don't know if you can see it there. Like That's like my union's shield. On a leather cigar case. Yeah. I, I spent a lot of money on this uh, ultraviolet printer that I can print out those custom. I actually, uh, uh, Sam, you would know because you got the lighters. Yeah. You flip uh, for the shop. Flip it over. I don't know if you saw them yet. Um, oh. I couldn't. I couldn't do the one with the QR code because it it just didn't. It, 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 it. 
it didn't print right and mm-hmm. I didn't like it. Okay. So yeah, we basically put any logo, any image yeah, on lighters, cutters, cigar cases, humidors. Yeah. Oh, so all that all that stuff is the again, and it's all raising money for a good cause. Oh. I, I tell my reps all the time when they when they piss and moan, which they don't really piss and moan. So if you guys are listening, <laughs> uh, they're just talking bullshit. There's only uh, five the people only one, listening. I'm the here. only one that doesn't get paid here. I'm the <laughs> only one. Uh, everything I do is for the guys that work for me and the charities that I support. That's awesome, man. Uh, I don't have a salary. I don't get a paycheck. Uh, thank goodness, eventually now it pays for my gas and my truck. There you go. But that's that's about it. Oh, oh that, that's fantastic. Can I'm going to get the podcast to pay for my gas and my truck. I'd, I'd like that. Moving on. Right. Uh, I, nice. I'm going to touch cool. on some of the uh, the comments real quick. Uh, Seth Jones said 50 cents per cigar cap on any cigar in Connecticut. That's awesome. Uh, he talked bust that out when we were talking about the tax rate. Uh, Mike Gold said he loved the Hoya de Monterey Excalibur, but he preferred the Churchill format. Uh, so you got a little uh, like minded blood on that one. And Seth Jones said, Tom, did you frequent Martinez cigars? I didn't go to Martinez. Uh, I can't remember the name of the guy. He was on like uh, Knox, Ave- uh, Knox Place, like 202nd in Knox Place. He started out of his basement, and someone put me onto him. And Sean and I, my old partner Sean, went there one day, and he was rolling in his in his basement. And we would just pop in and, and buy them. And then he wound up opening up a shop on 188th and Arthur Avenue. Arthur Avenue was like this major, massive Italian little area in the middle of the shithole Bronx, <laughs> well, Italian restaurants and markets and whatnot. And he opened up a spot there for a little while, uh, but I, I didn't. Uh, I, I don't remember the guy's name. Um, no, that's fantastic. He's able to build himself up just by rolling in his basement. I, I love hearing stories. Yeah, about oh, dude, like that. he he came in. He had bins and bins and bins. I rem- I remember being in a in a squad car on like a you know mid mid uh, on a middle evening, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, and I was smoking before Rocky Patel. I I, I think this is accurate. Before Rocky Patel was Rocky Patel, it was uh, Poros Indios because he's uh, he's of Indian descent. I believe his company yeah, started was, as Poros uh, Indios. It was uh, Indian re- tobacco. It was uh, actually because of that was with Phil Zangi. Phil Zangi owned the um, the trademark for Indian Motorcycle Company when they went out of business, uh-huh. and so Phil Zangi ended up meeting Rocky Patel uh, and brought him in as an investor. So it was Indian tobacco because of the motorcycle is actually where it came from. But it wasn't pro- Poros Indios before that. Uh, no, no, I'm that was his, his 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 entry into into the cigar world came with uh, Phil Zangi. Uh, it was, so it was Indian Indeed tobacco. Back. Yeah, oh. nice. Uh, yeah, hmm. uh, Seth Jones. That's why I thought it was Forest Indios. Yeah. I remember smoking this thing. It was like a like a sixty four ring gauge, and <laughs> getting out of the car, throwing up. It was so strong. <laughs> back in those days, that was that. real rare. And, and, the cops being cops, you know, my guy's like, you pussy, like, you can't smoke. Uh, dude, I was green, and I had been smoking for 10 years at that point. Oh, wow. Uh, so, speaking was, of green was, cops, what's the coolest thing you ever found in the uh, the evidence lockup? Uh, coolest thing you ever well, I don't know about, well, not evidence lockup, dude, but I'll tell you what, this is kind of, <laughs> when we did search warrants, we, we did a lot of search warrants, so we were, search warrants are almost always for guns. Right. So uh, we go into an apartment, you kind of lock up the people that you were looking for, and then you start tearing through for guns. We were looking for guns. I, I would always look for, and I found them all the time, were either photos of the guy, you know, with no oh. clothes on, with his girlfriend or whatever, or sex toys. Oh. We find sex toys That's your cue. all the time. <laughs> so we had a sergeant. So, you know, you have your porn name. Your porn name is like your middle name and the street you grew up on. There you go. So that that's very similar. That's so, my silly so, sausage, bud. It's got a healthy sheen well, on Pazuda, it. So we grabbed the sergeant. We said, what, what's your sex name? Uh, what's your porn name? He said, I don't know what you're talking about. So his middle name was Frank, and he grew up on Oak Street in Weehawken, oh, nice. New Jersey. Oh. And we took this massive dildo, and we cut little slits in the side, and we put two plastic forks in it. So it sat like this, and we put the tag on it, Frank Oak. And that was his little – and it sat in the office oh, for geez. probably four or five years. Until somebody got offended and it Fantastic. had to go. Yeah, well, that, that was way before offensive. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, Wasn't there We yet. found some uh, – we recovered some pretty crazy shit. Oh, so what kind of wine are you drinking? I'm curious now as a aficionado. Uh, this is um, uh, Brazilian – not Brazilian. Um, yeah, Brazilian uh, Trapiche. It's a cab. Okay. Oh. It's a cheap ass 
ten dollars for a, a magnum nice uh it's dynamite it's one of the great things about steak. wine as well right is like you, you you get people that are just like cigar people the, they want to buy the most expensive thing just for the status of it, just because they feel like that must be the best thing. But there are so many ridiculously affordable wines that are really, really good. Yeah. yeah. I wish you would tell that to my wife because <laughs> I'm going to tilt you over. You see all those boxes behind me here? That's all boxes of wine from our last Napa trip in oh. August. So she must yeah, have had a better yeah, job so, than so you. I, so I drink the I drink the five dollar bottle of wine, and she <laughs> wants the hundred and five dollar bottle. You got to quit taking her to Napa. Like that, I feel like there's an easy solution. Uh, Speaking of which, her sister lives in San Diego, and they it's oh. a, it's like a family reunion. Game over. So yeah. I kind of have to go. I play around the golf. We do some tours, and we spend way much more more money than we have. But what are you guys drinking? I was going to ask light. Sam. It looks like it looks Scotch like. No, nah, this one is Redwood Empire Lost Monarch. It's a blended uh, bourbon out, blended of, whiskey. out of California. It's uh, Sonoma County, actually. So we did a run. We did a nice run with um, uh, Three Chord. So Three Chord Bourbon and a Whiskey Company is owned by Pat Benatar and Neil Giraldo, who were just inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Nice. And my buddy Brian Canning is a, a, one of the owners there. And we did a two-barrel run, 480 bottles of line of duty bourbon oh, that wow. went very quickly. Uh, it was lights out. It, it was tasty as can be. And then they discontinued the program, oh. and now we're working with a distillery in New Jersey to try and get us back up and running. Hopefully, you'll keep the uh, cigar junkies in mind on that next run, maybe. There you go. Yeah. Give me a shout. What I was doing is I was taking the bottles, and I would peel the label off, and I could custom – print like this on the bottle so oh. if you were doing an event i could custom print oh, whatever yeah. you wanted on there for your event and it, then it became like a collector's bottle yeah you no, bring it home you wash it out you could put whatever you wanted on it back up on the shelf so you didn't just finish your bottle of jack and throw it away i'll tell you what some uh, so a whiskey that i want to see get more attention is drift it's out of san diego um have you messed with them at all i know there's a ton of no. in that area so they actually they're on they're in like a strip mall and then right across the street there's a brewery and they exchange barrels and they keep reusing so they don't do anything they it's all small batch so they give each other wood oh they give each other lots of wood all right and uh but the last not bottle, just in the morning <laughs> yeah not uh the, la wrong with that. the last bottle i had that batch is gone unfortunately but you it smelled like a double ipa i mean really strong smelled like a double ipa couldn't taste it all delicious bourbon inside but it was really cool because the nose was so different from what you were getting. Uh, this one, it's a really good bourbon, but it's you know it, I I was looking for that unique IPA this time, and I think it I think this one's from a stout barrel, so it's got a little bit of that charring and that sweetness to the back of it, but it doesn't have that uh, piney grapefruity essence to it. But Dave, if you haven't checked them out, next time you're out there, look them up. Well, I think we're gonna do a, a little short run with a. Um uh, distillery, a micro distillery in uh, outside Tampa nice. uh, for beer. Oh, uh, they are all about charity, uh, which is what we're about. So we have very similar interests. But the uh, the last run we did, we did a short run of a honey bourbon. I'm not a honey guy. I'm not. A, I, I like my stuff. I like my bourbon to be taste like bourbon. I like my yeah, cigars yeah. to be. So people say, "Hey, do you have a flavored cigar?" I said, "Yes." And they say, "What flavor?" I go, "Cigar flavor." Yeah. Tobacco. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. Even though acids are crushing it. Oh yeah. It's not what. I'm do. Yeah, there's so a market for that. Product. Yeah, you just, you just try this honey bourbon. I reluctantly tried it, and apparently what happened was the distiller has got a friend who's a, a honey maker, a honey drawer, not honey, uh, yeah, honey, with bees. Yeah. So he needed a, he needed a couple of barrels because he ran out of a place to store the honey. So he stores the honey in the barrels for like six months, and then he dumps it and he sells it or whatever, and he gives the barrels back to the distiller up in Michigan. And the distiller goes, what the hell am I going to do with this? So he starts <laughs> aging bourbon in the honey-soaked oh, wood. Wow. So it's nothing added. It's not an additive. It's, yeah. a, it's a natural infusion. I, I, I couldn't even – I couldn't help myself. So oh. we, we, we ran that run, and I held six cases for myself. Damn. Six. <laughs> I knew that I'm never going to get this again. Mm, like, I don't like the flavored stuff. I don't like the cinnamon-flavored stuff. I knew I'm never going to have that. And now I've got – 
five cases left. Wow. <laughs> Sitting in the office. Uh, that's respectable. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> – you're all right. You still got a little bit of a – uh, yeah, I guess. A, a, a little bit put away for later on but we're going to get to one of yeah, our I mean. tent poles today let's talk about the news this week it's time for the cigar news brought to you by tom's penworths as a cigar smoker you appreciate luxury and as a premium cigar smoker you appreciate handmade craftsmanship and as a customer of tom's penworths you'll appreciate the selection of custom-made limited production items that you can show off to your friends from handmade pens pencils bottle openers cigar cases and now custom rings Tom will create something special for you or your loved one. Find him on the web at etsy.com slash shop slash Tom's Penworks. And as always, you can find the link in the description for this episode. Dang right. Uh, Emperor's Group LLC, the parent company of Emperor's Cut Cigars, has announced its fourth line, the Red Tail Series. It's a series that pays homage to the famed Tuskegee Airmen. Uh, the Red Tail Series. You really don't know how to say Tuskegee? No. No idea. That's like a common word. Like that. That's I was. I, I listen. I wasn't gonna say it. Yo, you no. Yeah. You absolutely say it. This is the podcast I where you know, say. It. Yo, no, you you not, call not me out. Place. Oh yeah, yeah no, yeah, it, yeah. it's but, a thing because he's not gonna hesitate to do it to you and me. No, yeah, you call Thank me out you, on my bullshit. We're, we'll be all right. <laughs> uh, but I tell you what, it's still a lot better than hearing him try to read off the page. You uh, calm down. We we came to that conclusion a long time ago. The Red Tail series will consist of two blends, one featuring a natural wrapper, the other featuring a Maduro, and each of the two blends will come in a Toro six and a half by fifty two. And a torpedo, a six and a half by fifty-two. So a uh, lot of range there. Uh, production comes from the La Aurora factory and was produced in collaboration with La Aurora Master Blender Manual or er- Noel. Right. Uh, Placencia Cigars has recently contacted retailers about a new limited edition cigar known as the Placencia. Now this one, I don't you, know what no, all you those get a pass on this one. A hetel, a hethel. A tethel, something. At the fall? It's a cigar that will be released to coincide with the start of the 2022 FIFA World Cup uh, being consen- Is it FIFA? It's FIFA. FIFA. Come yeah, on, I, bud. Did, I, I don't watch the soccers or the footballs, uh, <laughs> either kind. Uh, and it's contested in uh, the Qatar later this uh, month. Uh, the, new sil- the new line from Placencia comes in one size, a 6x52 Toro. Very popular these days. The cigars will be presented in 10-count boxes. A total of 2,500 boxes of the cigar will be available in the U.S. and an additional 2,500 in the international market. We don't talk pricing on this show, uh, but I'm guessing you could get a PS5 for the less than one box of uh, these sticks. <laughs> I caramba. Uh, they, they are pricey. Yeah, they're a bit much. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Black Label Trading Company is pleased to announce the shipment of morphine to select retailers beginning next week. Morphine yeah. is a handcrafted... So wait, they are not next week. They are actually in. Ah, fair enough. Yeah, well, They, they I have mean, arrived at, at retail. I had to scroll back a little yeah. ways uh, well, to I'm, find I'm the I'm glad news. he didn't say the Morpine. Yeah. That would have been a mess. <laughs> the Morpine. <laughs> the Morpine. Uh, they are handcrafted <laughs> in Esteli, Nicaragua at Fabrica Ovejo Negra. You get two choices in wrapper, an Ecuadorian Maduro or a San Andreas. Uh, the most concerning thing about that is that I thought that it might encourage you to push your syringe <laughs> marketing <laughs> campaign. Uh, with us being the cigar junkies, Sam thought it would be wise for us to make stickers or uh, some branding in a syringe shape. Uh, I am. Uh, yeah, probably probably not a great branding oh, idea. Come on, you got more sense so marketing. I mean, Sam, Sam did not study marketing. <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm as anti-political correct as anybody. I think, but that uh, one's too far. Yeah, yes. that that idea struck me as probably not a good idea. Too much. Uh, I I don't I don't think he pays his lawyer enough for the shit storm that would follow. Uh, that, that one would campaign. be rough. Yeah, <laughs> the only the only upside to that would be that only like fifty people would see it and probably be okay, <laughs> swept <laughs> under the rug. Yeah, but if they had a, if they had a class action suit, the junkies, which are in the hundreds of millions in this country, yeah. would all sign up. <laughs> so what do we get? Uh, you get one syringe full of heroin, yeah. and then you go away. <laughs> it's like Kramer getting the uh, the coffee, right? Oh, see, I I'm glad you went there. I know that uh, the Seinfeld references are fair game. Then, yeah. Uh, my my buddy over here only did uh, I'm working on only it. did up to season four so far. Uh, three or four, yeah. Uh, but one of the first things well, I wanted to ask. He's also on like twenty six. He's like twenty six. <laughs> I think Seinfeld was off the air when this guy was born. So uh, Dude, I love it. That's the second time in two days. He's thirty six. Uh, the, the, the resolution on our cameras isn't that good. We don't have the budget for. I got uh, called that in person yesterday, cam- bud. Yeah. Oh yeah. And how much alcohol had that person in butt? None. None. None? Yeah. Change the yeah. filter. Yeah. His jersey. 
There we, yeah. <laughs> I mean, standards it doesn't are count. Low. <laughs> it doesn't count. Uh, they got so Which much. Which is mostly junkies, so it makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> uh, we're everywhere, uh, in a manner of speaking. But yeah, <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you. So I, I couldn't remember the reference uh, for the name of the the strangler, whoever it was that they accused Kramer of being in the show. Oh. But I wanted to ask if you'd caught the uh, the I did see the New one. York Strangler or whatever it was. That I did see that one. That that's a good episode. <laughs> well, that's like a two parter. Sh- yeah, he was in California though. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, he was traveling cross country. Yeah, yeah that's that it. guy was like, yeah, dude. The kid was <laughs> all strung out. Mm-hmm. Pretty little thing. Uh, well, she was. Yeah. Don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Come to find out, they let him out of the car. Mm-hmm. Well. No, I, I, I actually understood that reference. Well, look at that. Now, unfortunately, my buttons don't work. I mean, they work. I could push it, but we'd hear it 20 seconds later. Yeah, and you'll have that. Uh, we'd have a better chance of being wrong. Buttons. Oh, we, we could push them. They just <laughs> The timing would be terrible. So the... So we're talking, the talking about the way you, you mispronounced uh, uh, Skiggy. How do you pronounce the town that it it chops it? Managa Galaga? What is that? Managa So that, that's not where the shop is. Uh, the shop's actually going to be in South Park, Pennsylvania. I had it shipped there this time. But uh, yeah, that's Monongahela. Yeah. It's a. Uh, Monongahela. It's yep. exactly. If you. If, it's it, like it's, is that an Indian name? Is that like an Indian princess somewhere? I, I feel like we have to call them Native Americans now. And uh, I think it was inspired uh, yeah. by a dance. I'll call them whatever. The hey, Monongahela. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it, it, it follows the phonetics exactly as it is. Um, but you got Monongahela, and then just south of here, there's Monongahela. And then Monongahela is another town that they're all, like, within 40 minutes of Yeah, here. but fuck them. Yeah, well, yeah, they don't care. They don't matter. They're in West Virginia. Well, because oh. they're married inside the family. They're, you guys yeah, inbreds. That's, right. that's what's uh, going on yeah, there. Their, their favorite holiday just passed, ha- Halloween, with all the pumpkin. So, yeah, that's a shame. Oh, fuck, I, oh I thought it was fuck your sister. That yeah. was the holiday. Hey, <laughs> I, I, I said it in a nicer way. Pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different I'm for being, you being on the moral high road, I know, right? I'm, I'm not used to this. Yeah, I'm usually the low, low, low hanging fruit. Yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. No, no, right. no. There's a. I know my audience. Yeah. I wouldn't say that in church. <laughs> no, well, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't hear. I was okay. A New York church, you might be okay. Jersey too, actually. There you go. Uh, you, 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 you probably be all right. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Robinson, welcome to the party. Oh, I was an altar boy. I was, I was taught the right way. We yeah. got uh, one of our. Our West Coast wannabes in the audience yeah. with us uh, right now. Our West Coast counterpart, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I don't, don't want to call them a counterpart. I mean, they're different than us in the way that they're like actually structured, responsible, and all that. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember what I referred to him as the other day, but I probably would be good. best not. Yeah, uh, maybe just let that it was, go. It was, they have guests. They have guests that don't curse. Oh no, no, they, they, they're very much. Uh, <laughs> but look, they've listened to our show and they're still willing to do uh, some work with us later. So. Uh, they, they, you can tell they're twisted fools. But if you ever have an opportunity or an invitation, Tom, to get onto the Beyond the Humidor uh, podcast by the Loomis Cigar Cartel, take them up on it. Those guys are so much fun. Yeah, I just don't say uh, no to anybody. If somebody yeah. wants to put me on and hear me bullshit, I'm like, I'm there. <laughs> I Jumping think if, if my wife is still listening, I hope she was paying attention to that part. You could could learn something from this man. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I will tell you, though, if you're going to be on their show, um, if Greg's gonna be there, wear a blindfold. Oh, um, it's it's for your own good. Yeah, he's not pretty. Yeah. What are what are his bra- uh, his he pronouns? Will, he will take me. Uh, it. Oh no no no, dude, they're on the West Coast, it, but they're his okay. Pronouns, it. <laughs> I, I, I that that that's just the random assignment I come up with. Uh, Scott, you could probably give us a heads up and let us know what what uh, Greg's yeah, it, pronouns are. There you go. Uh, uh, yeah, I, don't know. I need to know. Yeah, I so don't want to offend. I don't want to offend. <laughs> You're not gonna offend. I, those guys will. It, bring that up if you ever talk to him, and I promise you'll have fun. <laughs> yeah. uh, they are a hoot. Uh, we, we've uh, we've chatted with them quite a bit, and they are they're just a blast. It's a giant shit talking it, it, fest. Isn't it, isn't it funny? We were talking earlier about uh, you know uh, s- sitting in a cigar lounge, and you know you, you're you're pulling up and you beat up old Chevy and the guy with the Bugatti and the guy with the you know the, the Lamborghini pull up, and then you walk in that door, and then all of a sudden. And where everyone's equal. Yeah. And yeah. you have this conversation. You say, oh, these guys in California, who, by the way, I've never met. Yeah. But we've spoken and we've seen it. And we're like, I like, where's the Bill Murray? I want to party with that guy. Yeah. Like, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't matter where you're from, what your politics are. If you're like an idiot like I am 
Like, I want to hang out with you and we'd be idiots together. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the Bugattis, but uh, just remember, if Scott invites you in, what happens in the Winnebago stays in the yeah. Winnebago. Yeah, you might want to watch yourself on that. Yeah. Well, if he says leave your pants outside, I might be a little reluctant because then I'd say, well, where do I hang my 45? <laughs> well, uh, I, you got to leave your pants I outside. Pants to hang it. <laughs> when, when you're when you're cooking meth in the Winnebago, you got to leave your <laughs> pants outside. That's what I learned from Breaking Bad. Because there might be spontaneous combustion, and you don't want that to be fuel. So that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. perfectly. I am enjoying this cigar too much, by the way, because this I'm, is a great stick, dude. I'm flying through this. Like, I'm, I'm a fast smoker, like but I don't generally smoke this fast. It's actually it, with this bourbon, really, really great. Um, I will say my favorite from your line is the 470, but I, you know. Uh. Which uh, dude, we, I, did we, we did that one as well, didn't we? On the I show. think so. I think that was one of our first, like, early yeah. episodes. Because they came in, and that I was, tried it, and I was like, dude, we got We're good for repeats yeah. on this show. Uh, that, was my, that was my baby until we, uh, until we released The Unknown. Oh, yeah? Uh, and it just, I mean, and the 470's got a great story. It's got a great story. There's 470 first responders, police, fire, and military that were killed in 9-11. Yeah. Um, they're two in a pack meant to be shared with somebody in, in remembrance or whatever it is that you feel with that connection, uh, two different uh, um, uh, barber pole design. Yeah. So you've got your Brazilian and Ecuadorian Maduro, and, and the flavor is dynamite. But the unknown is, I like a fi- I like the 54. Hey, there it is, the box. Yeah. So yeah. I like I like the 54 size-wise, you know, in, in, the, uh, in the diameter. And that unknown with the Rahisa wrapper for me, I... Yeah, oh, yeah, that's my go-to. I'm trying, what, I played golf yesterday. You said, oh, what, what did we do today, this week? We did, uh, I played golf yesterday, and I smoked four unknowns. Nice. And around the golf. What and a, it was which, just... Which box is the unknown? Which color? I got them standing up. Uh, so the, white the white one. Okay, one. that's the one from your line I have not had. I, 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 actually, I was, just about to, <laughs> I was just about to point to it. And <laughs> it's that one right there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's you can't one. see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the white one. Yeah, the white one... Uh, um, Right over Cody's shoulder. Oh, let me uh, the, let, let me grab uh, another cigar out of the box real quick because I'm gonna end up with a second one today. It is. Or tax deductible, uh, so you're okay. Yeah. All right, now we can talk. We can talk about him now because he's not listening. Oh, I talk about him anyway. Um, yeah, I I don't know what his deal is. Uh, he just showed up one I day. He <laughs> wears that stupid hat, and uh, actually the hat's pretty dope because his uh, his triplets had it made for him, so I can't talk smack on the hat. The triplets. face, on the other hand, oh yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, uh, who uh, does that? The, the the amazing thing is he's got. Uh, I I already did that, sir. Oh, I didn't know you did. Uh, yeah. Oh no, I <laughs> I took a sticker before before he even got back from. Uh, Jersey. Oh, I saw the sticker. I saw yeah, as no. Soon as I chimed in. I he's got uh, triplets, three beautiful kids, to three different women. Uh, and uh, <laughs> no, it's it's all the same same woman. Well, he's a know. good looking man, so I can see why he would have three di- three beautiful women. Well. I got nothing for that. I, I don't know where to go. Gay now. He, he's totally talking gay about we're we're talking about all your baby daddies. Look, hey, uh, we're talking about the Mets. <laughs> yeah, the Mets, the Mets. Nobody cares about the Mets. I just trying to get one in there. Just try. You, you got to push one button per <laughs> per episode. I, I, I was like, if there's one that right. I could push, it's that one. I'm just gonna hope that with the delay that it hits at a time works. that's applicable. <laughs> that actually works out. How, so how old are the triplets? Five. They are five, five years, years. Yeah, five years old. Five, not, not five months. So the, the the hard stuff's over. Yeah, man. That, that's I was talking with some people about that last night. Like, oh, you know, it's it's got to be terrible. I can't. I'm like, dude, triplets are great after the first year. That first year, horrible. Oh, no. But this after is, that, man, this is actually kind of difficult to do it this way because he said the hard part's over. I wanted to hit that's the button. That's what she said. Yeah. Uh, but the delay on it would have been a. a I think that would have been close enough. Yeah. Well, well, we'll 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 see. Maybe I'll play around a little bit more. I've he, got he, uh, nice. He's afraid. He's afraid to have sex with his wife ever again. Because God forbid. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. got six. Yeah. No, dude. <laughs> I am not intrigued by the concept of having another litter because my wife doesn't have kids. She has litters. Yeah. Besides that, he's married, so there was a pretty good chance he was never right. going to have sex again, anyways. Yeah. You should totally have sex with men then, because then there's guaranteed no way it's going to happen. It's like he read your book, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he knows something. He did his research. That's for sure. That is a cool box. I've never seen that. So, so that box. It's funny enough. Uh, I like we, that. When we broke, when we when we released that cigar, it was an event only cigar. So it didn't come in a box. It was in bundles of twenty. Okay. And then uh, when I do events, everyone was going nuts for it. They said, "Oh, this is great! Blah, blah, blah. You got you got. It. When are we going to get it in the shops?" 
So I started giving it to the shops. I was putting them into like um, the cookie jar looking humidor, the acrylic humidor. Yeah. yeah. That got very expensive. So that, that box that you see, I buy in plain wood. I paint it myself by hand. I use the same <laughs> printer that I do this, and I print all that. And oh, okay. Then I film oh, that's and wrap them. Dude, that's all homemade until the next run comes back in uh, January. I like the little it's, ammo it's can awesome. kind of design to it, is what it reminds me of. It, it, they stay they stay up in inside of the lid. Um, yep. Well, most of the time well, they do. I, I wanted to fit as many as I could in there because the bundles are twenty, so I got eighteen into it. Um, nice. And once it's on the shelf, who cares? Like the guys, people are gonna buy it. Yeah, no, it's awesome. And then the four seventy, I wanted to show for anybody who hasn't seen it. I like that it's basically you know you got a twin tower thing kicking, you know, in in homage to it. And then the you know everything's twos about it. I think it's cool. <laughs> you wanted to show everybody you're holding it up to your phone, and I'm like, you're they they can't see it through that. Uh, so normally we have a secondary camera as well, so like when we go on Zoom here, I mean we're kind of really outside of our norm, right? Yeah. Like the whole format of the show has to change uh, to compensate yeah. for the fact that it's being run through an external program. Can only run one one camera at a time. Uh, I'm sure we could figure out, like, if we had a different Smarter camera setup. The, 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 the problem is the camera system that we use goes through its own utility. So, like, you can only run one of them at a time in this yeah. in this mm -hmm. format. But, uh, you know, we, we get by. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it does. Okay. So that 470, we had 343 FDNY members that were killed on 9-11. There were 72 uh, law enforcement and 55 military wow. members that were killed on 9-11. When you add those three numbers up together, it, come, it, it equals 470. Yeah, no. And I, that was, the, the, you know, again, fantastic. everything that we do tries to have some sort of relation back to police, fire, and military family. So the CO is the commanding officer. The FNG is the fucking, fucking new, guy, new guy, which you, everyone has. The yep. fucking new guys here, the police academy, would, you know, would release their guys. We get 15 FNGs, and that's what we call them, the FNGs, yep. you know. Uh, the unknown is uh, in police world. If you do a report, a police report in NYPD, and you don't know the name of the suspect, it's unknown. Unknown, yeah. Uh, the Connecticut blend that's going to come out in January is going to be called the Four Star, because we have four stars in police, fire, and military. There's generals, there's chiefs. So everything kind of ties back to one of those families, you know? Yeah, yeah it all has logic behind it. I like it. It's kind of the opposite yeah. of what we do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this was not the original absolutely cigar. Absolutely no logic. This was not the original cigar that we had slotted for today. Um, we were talking, what, two, three weeks ago, and I was like, oh, crap. Or you pointed out, you're like, oh, hey, you know that's Veterans Day, right? I'm like, oh. I'm like, well, we got to, like, I wanted to do, you know, I'm going to get you on the show for it because of that. Like, you know, it's, it's great. Appreciate it. Yeah, I think we had the order different, right? Was it, was it, I don't even remember what it was, but it was, hey, let's. I let's had him slotted something. for next year. Yeah. I, yeah, I had you slotted for beginning of next year for the to smoke another one of these on the show, and it was like, no, 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 for for Veterans Day, we're gonna we're gonna have at least something that's got a flag in it, you know, or or pays pays back to people, and you know, I mean, that only means that that only means that Carrot Top canceled probably, right? Yeah, you had, <laughs> you had right. Carrot Top originally no. and he canceled. I actually screwed that, you over you because me. you could have waited until next year, and uh, you would have had double the exposure. Fifty people uh, would have seen this. <laughs> And uh, you might have got something. Generous with the, I think you're being generous with the 50. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> um, well, you know, as a guy, anytime you talk numbers, you got to double it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One so. inch. <laughs> <laughs> 12 whole inches. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody's measuring from the top, right? Well, yeah. yeah. From his, someone's measuring from their asshole. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. I did it backwards. Yeah, it's no. it's a little dyslexia. I never hurt anybody. What's on the top? Well, just uh, just just the tip. Nothing, yeah, just for a second to see how it feels. Um, there's nothing on the top except hurt feelings. Hurt feelings, baby. <laughs> you never measure from the top. That's all it counts. That's right. Yeah, but so I'm uh, fucking the shit out of you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we were on, or I was talking to Mike uh, when we were placing the order and whatnot, and uh, he said you were here in PA hunting, right? Um, uh, New York. Oh, okay. Which is. My spot is around six miles from Sayre, Pennsylvania, which is, again, that, that uh, southeast corner okay. of the state. Like, you, you literally come out of Sayre, and you go five miles. You, 
from say or you go 80 feet and you're in new york is it the border gotcha but about five miles down the road is where i am all right did you get anything uh i took a reluctantly took a spike buck uh we go there's nice. a lot of big deer on the property we have 120 acres but it was late it was dark i'll shoot as many doe as i can get my hands on the females because there's they're just overrun with them and we're trying out to be a spike and uh which i wasn't happy about but yeah, it's me the freezer you. so wait wait it's a lot ask, of jerky ask Corey how he did on his last hunting expedition you could ask me how i did on all of them because uh the answer is the same <laughs> i have not ever uh had any luck and uh if it wasn't for the fact that uh, i like going with my uh in-laws to go up i probably change locations because yeah. uh yeah, my record is is zero. Uh, I'm hoping to change oh, that tomorrow. Good. I'm going in real confident. It's funny. My, I hunted with my dad, rest his soul. And when my kids got older and I wanted my kids to come hunt with me, we leased a farm. And at some point I realized that as much as I really enjoy hunting, this was more about the experience, like hanging out with my dad. Yeah. That yeah. I wanted to replicate with my kids. So at this point, you know, there, there's some eights, tens, 12 point bucks running around my property. And I could care less yep. about that. My father always said, when you get me a recipe for antler, I'll worry about <laughs> hunting a deer with antlers. Yeah. So I, so I, I first one that comes along, I, I, I butcher myself. I, I make a uh, homemade jerky, grind it up myself. I make jerky for myself. I, that that's all about me hanging out with my kids. S- Sam makes uh, jerky for himself he, all the time. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm jerking. No, um, yeah. no, I, where we used to live, uh, I would come home from night shift. I would just like for for me, hunting is ruined now. Like I don't, I'm not going out into the woods to sit anymore, because our last house. I would come home one night shift. I'd walk straight through my vest, my hat, my gun. We're sitting on the uh, or by the back door, right in the backyard. And I, well, I would just walk out onto the deck and sit down in my chair with a glass of bourbon. I would sit there. I'd smoke one whole cigar, and by the end of the cigar, if I didn't see a deer, I called it. If I got a deer. I'd go up in the garage, get a machine, dig a hole, hang it over the hole, butcher, clean it, everything right there, throw it into trash bags, bring it and clean it, and I'm, or wash it off, and I'm done. That was it. That's all. That that that's it for me hunting. And now, now it's like now it's like work, right? Yeah. I, what, what am I? I'm, you want you me to sit here for five somewhere. hours? Like no. Like I don't. Uh, I don't need. To, and I'm I'm the same as you. I've never shot a buck. I had, I've had ten and twelve points walk right in front of me, and I'll just laugh like hey, somebody's gonna get happy that I let that go. Because I have no. Oh no! I, I've shot him. I've shot him. I took a beautiful eight pointer last year. Yeah. And I just I don't wait for it. I don't wait. I'm not hunting for that specifically. I just if the if the doe comes by, it's down. If the little four comes by, it's down. Like that. That's gonna feed me. My uh, my son loves it. Yeah. If I put jerky in his lunchbox. Yeah. You know he loves it. The teachers at school love it. Like I just want to. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need. To, I don't need any sort of. Uh, vindication of a of a big giant rack yeah. on a wall behind me. If I get I, well, one that's great. Maybe a stripper. Yeah. <laughs> There's that. Uh, yeah, well, if she's on the wall, I got bigger problems. There you go. Uh, I don't know. You you pin her to the wall. It's not <laughs> in the basement. <laughs> yeah, that, depends the basement. on what kind of basement you have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Moving on. Moving uh, on. Uh, no, for me it started out it started about the camaraderie too, you know. It was just cool to have the weekend yeah. with the guys and stuff. Um at this point 7 8 years later, um I'm getting kind of sick of them. Uh, so, uh, tomorrow I'm hoping to go out into the woods and, uh, kill a deer as soon as it gets light out a little earlier than that. If I have to, uh, get that thing freaking taken care of and be back getting fucked up and smoking cigars at camp, waiting for the other assholes <laughs> to come back. So is it, uh, is it archery? Archery there? Yeah. PA now? Yeah. It's the last weekend for archery. So yeah, yeah us too. We open a uh, rifle on Saturday, but I'll tell you what, you know what I found? Cause I, I, I can only take enough. Uh, deer to feed us so one and a half to two is like the max i don't oh, care what comes along at that point because we can't eat that much venison in one year and I we're gonna get deer every year you need to take your i don't hunt, hunt mo- <laughs> dude i don't hunt mornings anymore oh you go I out just when hunt it's comfy. yeah no well, i don't get up in the morning yeah. honey get, get up in the morning I, i'm still hung over from the night before <laughs> i hunt the afternoon we come back eat drink go to bed at midnight wake up at 10 o'clock He's and like, I'm I retired. Get I, get get Dude, I get a deer every year yeah. hunting afternoons. Yeah, I, I want that to be enjoyable. Said so if I wanted to shoot somebody every day, I'd go back on the force, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's all. That's what you do. I just walk down the street in the Bronx. And, but I wouldn't do it in the morning. <laughs> in the He's an afternoon shift kind of guy. 
Uh, that might be uh, that might be the best adverse uh, advice that I think was ever inadvertently given <laughs> on the show. Is if you're cop, right? you're gonna commit a crime in New York, do it in the morning. Uh, <laughs> wait for the donut the shops to close. <laughs> no, they don't. They, 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 those those uh, they, so they start their shift at eight a.m. They have to have their breakfast, their coffee. They're not being aggressive until ten. So if you can kill <laughs> you someone go. between seven thirty and ten, you're golden. Are we still talking about deer or people here? Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, well, lots of twelve points in uh, in in downtown New York. Uh, yeah. Now, I, every deer that I've shot, I've shot in the face, right, right in the face. That's the other part of like I'm not shooting a, a buck. It's because I know that I, I'm just blowing that apart. Because if I with, shoot with it, a pellet gun, <laughs> well, no, three oh eight. Uh if if I get them in the face, I'm not wasting any meat. Like all of it's still good when I'm done. Yeah, we had a friend that did the same thing. That's all he did. Yep. But you know what? I, I'm, I'm pretty accurate. Yeah. I don't think I've lost probably 20 pounds of meat in the. I've been hunting since I'm 14. Yeah. For 36 years. I don't think I've ever had one that was not a dead <laughs> gut, uh, heart, liver, lung, vital shot that I lost meat. I mean, one maybe a front, front, uh, front wing. Yeah. But there's not much up in the front anyway. Yeah. My wife told me this afternoon she works from home uh, three days a week, uh, so she's in her home office, and she says, uh, you better bag a deer this weekend. And so real slow and creepy, I put my mouth up to her and said, yes, dear. And she looked at me like, oh, <laughs> shit, that's not what I meant. <laughs> yes, dear. Mm. Mm-hmm. You could have said, okay, honey. I could have. I chose not yeah. to. Uh, we you, all make decisions. You, I made mine. You went poorly. Live by. Uh, yeah. Live by. That's what I do. Why is that glass empty? Uh, well, I have to drive an hour and a half up the hunting camp after this. Uh, so. Oh, tonight? Yeah, yeah. That's Where part that? of that's part of the fun. Uh, it's about an hour and a half north of here. It's in a small town called Kennerdale. Uh, Allegheny National Forest is where we do our hunting. At uh, wife's that's family has uh, property up there. Uh, so the the really nice thing about it is even though it's five or ten degrees colder up uh there for the forecast uh once you get back in the valley where the tree stand is it drops another 10 degrees so uh you're guaranteed to freeze your balls off it's uh Mm. i've got more electric clothing uh in my hunting bag than probably most any other (laughs) american it's it's so you guys don't hunt like shirts and skins yeah I'm not skins. I'm not I mean, skins. if I see a skin up there, I'll, I'll hunt it. I, I was on a bunny hunt one year where we basically ended up. Don't in shirts tell and that skins. to my daughter. Because wait, it, are we talking about uh, Hep's place? It was end of February, and it was hot. And we're all out with shotguns. It's like everybody just keeps like stripping because the end of February is usually pretty cold. But it was like 55, 60 degrees, which you know when it's been negative four for how long? That feels mm-hmm. fantastic. Hey, we, we're out there and everybody's just like ripping clothes up. We end up just hanging them on trees, letting the dogs work while we, cause when you bunny hunt, like you're moving, you're, you're walking around a lot. Yeah. It, it, it was terrible. I, I have yeah. a hard time uh, accepting the word bunny. When you talk yeah. about that, we kill rabbits here in New yeah. York. We don't kill bunnies. Oh, I kill bunnies. My kid, it's my kids and I, no, we love them. They're delicious. That is my bunny. favorite meat actually. Oh, my poor girl. Thumper is, I, I is took, so good. I I took I, I always found them to be kind of tough. I did a, a couple of years ago. I took my pelican into the woods, yep. and I'm hoping that the DEC is not listening. <laughs> and I popped six different squirrels yep. with my pelican while I was hunting, and then I made a chili with them. Yeah. And I gotta tell you, it was lights out. The meat was juicy and tender, like 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 I said, always was like chicken. Yeah. It was like chicken. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. You get two pieces off the backbone. You get the two rear thighs. The fronts are really small, so you only get four pieces out of it. But I made chili with that, and it was that it sounds, was good stuff. When I do, when we do the bunnies, we do uh, a Dutch oven. You just take your veggies, throw it in there. You keep it high off the flame and just let it slow cook and keep it sealed. And if you do that, yeah, it'll be nice and tender and yummy. Tender, yeah? Yeah. It, oh, it's yummy. But well, then, it's- then the restaurants in New York City don't know how to do it because every time I've had rabbit, in some of the nicest places I've been to, it's just always tough. It should not just be not tough, and it should not be dry at all. It shouldn't be. No. God, no. Uh, tur- the only meat that I have never found a good way to cook is turtle. And and that there's what? I think there's That's good. Seven, I like turtles. seven or eight kinds of meat in a turtle. And, uh, like, two of them are just, they're 
they're hard to like you can't eat them they're they're rough and once you get rid of once you get rid of them there's not much left like they're oh dude not yeah. a whole lot of turtles. and then well there's and the the cleaning process for a turtle is terrible like you put it in you know you, you keep it alive and you starve them is what you know like there's no like good way to be humane about it you starve them you put them in a bucket of clean water when the water turns brown you pull them out put them in a clean bucket and you keep doing that but it takes like 20 transfers like it's like four days to get them why can't you just drown them <laughs> yeah there's so much well you don't want to drown because there's the, so the much dirt and silt between them. their bodies and their shell and there's so much just they process so yeah, but much. But once they're dead, if you if you drop in a bucket of water and they drown, then you can remove them from the shell and you can clean them up. No, there. Well, there's and plus their internals and all that stuff. Like, I've never been the one to butcher them, but from what I understand, there's a problem when you split them open. It's just I do, don't know if we should really everywhere. take you uh, and your your thoughts on this process since you've never had it done well. Well, well, that this is true. <laughs> if you've never but had it I'm done saying, well, like, maybe the dirt you're you're removing the flavor, man. Well, maybe you need say, to leave I mean, the dirt and the shit in there. I've eaten raccoon, I've eaten groundhog. Like I've had those where they were decent. I've never had them where they were good. But like, I I I, I we used to do game feasts a couple times a year, and I I, I like trying different meats that people go. Wait, yeah, you definitely. ate what? I mean, fun little fact. Yeah, try that. You never know when you're gonna if you fall into something you're like wow muskrat is amazing and you think I got muskrat all over the pond I'm gonna kill every one of those motherfuckers. <laughs> Kids have ever Creepy. tried muskrat? Something with rat in the name that that might be too far for you and me. I, I remember years ago I had uh, we were cruising around the back roads there in the in the uh, in the in the Hick Mountains and we get off the ATVs and I see this snake. I didn't know what it was. It was slipping across the top of the the uh, the, the top of the lake or whatever or whatever. So I have a four, I, I had a forty five with me. I oh. take my forty five out, which isn't super accurate after like you know six inches, and I line up and boom! I take a shot. A snake jumps up in the air, and he's flopping around, and he starts beelining for this for the uh, for the shore. I hit him again. Boom! Hit him a second time. Unbelievable. Pull him out. One of the guys that we're with is a veterinarian. And he's mad at me. He's yelling, why <laughs> would you just kill that thing to kill it? And I was like, I'm not killing it to kill it. I'm killing it to eat it. And now you have to. Eat it. Oh, you goddamn right I'm going to eat it. You should have shot it in the meat. Oh, skinned it. I made a, a blackened seasoning. Dude, snake Fried is up a good. little bit of oil in the pan. Dude, it was phenomenal. All the guys that ate it were, were, were impressed that it was taste that good. And the one old guy who lived up there who like lived off the land, yeah. had no teeth. Th this guy never bought a steak in a restaurant in his whole adult life. Wow. He just killed deer. Mm -hmm. He looked at me and he said, I'm not going to eat that. I said, why not? Why don't you try it? And he says, I ain't never been that hungry. <laughs> and he wouldn't, he wouldn't eat the snake. But uh, I'll tell you what, if I shoot it, I'm eating it. And if I don't like it, I'll never shoot it again. Have you ever had gator like cooked well? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Snake and gator, gator aren't that that far apart. You just no, get a lot not. less of it. <laughs> All right. like if, if a fish fucked a chicken and had a baby, right. it would be gay. Yes, that's a really good yeah. way of putting it. And speaking yeah. of tent poles, let's get to our <laughs> next one. <laughs> Time for the events of the week. Uh, Saturday, November 12th is Customer Appreciation Thanksgiving event. Yes. Uh, 6 p.m. until question mark. Fried turkey and all the fixings. Feel free to bring a covered dish if you want. BYOB bourbon smoking. This is, uh, by the way, uh, this is a Leaning House event. Yes. Uh, and is this at Leaning House? Yeah, it's going to okay, be at, I, at Leaning House for that one. Yeah, I, I copied from Chichingo's text message. Yeah. And uh, I told you it was a busy day. Yeah. So I didn't realize what I didn't get. I had my phone up for the other events. Uh, but anyways, uh, they're going to have the bourbon smoking, uh, cigar specials. Uh, sponsored by Dave and Patty Productions and brought to you by Leaning House Cigars. Nice. Uh, then we have Monday, November 14th, the Crown Heads Turkey Fry at the Smokestack Everything Tobacco. Jake from State Farm, I mean uh, Crown Heads, will be there uh, wheeling and dealing uh, frying turkeys in the parking lot. So uh, lots of opportunity for turkey this weekend. Uh, have a Bloody Mary at the Bloody Mary Bar. Uh, and uh, you get to have the blood medicine, a Crown Heads event only cigar. Ooh. So that's uh, that's kind of exciting, right? Hey, Patty, uh, grab me one of those while you're up there. I haven't yeah. had that yet. It Patty and Chichingo are there. That's today, right? Uh, Patty's there right now. Yeah. Uh, Friday, November the 18th. Actually, well, that that's not the for the event though. Though. the event's the 14th. Yeah. 
Uh, Friday, November 18th is Retro Movie Night at Dirty Dogs. Dirty this is another Dogs. Dave and Patty production. If it's anything like Retro Video Game Night, I'm sure it'll be a blast. Starting at 6 p.m., movies to begin at around 7. A double feature of Casablanca and the Maltese Falcon, also featuring period-appropriate drinks, pizza, and, of course, popcorn. Hell yeah. Uh, so, hell yeah. Sounds I like think, I think Bloody, I think Bloody Mary should be period-appropriate. Right, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like basically just gin. Like, I feel like period appropriate is just going to be gin. Lots and lots of gin. Um, no, oh, you were talking. But you earlier. mentioned uh, you mentioned David Leaning House, uh, uh, Puskovich, good guy. Uh, he he actually hosted me at the Polish um, Polish Club. Polish Club. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I was in Pittsburgh a couple weeks ago, uh, about a month ago, whatever. They had, had a really uh, great event there. There was this young kid. I think his name is uh, Evan. Evan. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. P- uh, blues. Oh, he's Young good, kids, he? They were just riffing. Like, it was a really cool event. Just hanging out. I, I brought a bottle of bourbon and just met a whole bunch of really cool people. Yeah. And it was a nice, it was a good night. Yeah, so it was a good night. Uh, Dave's actually our, one of our sponsors for the show. So when Just the Tip doesn't buy the cigars for the show, uh, Dave provides them for the show. I actually, he's kind of my mentor. I worked for him for the last year or so. And I went in and basically told him right off the bat, like, hey, I'm thinking about opening a shop. I'm here to learn how to do that. And, you know, you know Dave enough now because you've met him. Mm-hmm. He looked at me and he's like, well, since you told me, I like you. I'll help you. It was, you know, it was pretty fantastic. Yeah. He's been a he's been a great, just a great person for us. Uh, hung out with him a lot at PCA while we were there as well. And, you know, it, it's been, I've learned a lot from him and I, I expect to learn a lot more. He's been doing this for quite some time. Uh, Mike Goltz is going to be working that customer appreciation night at the Leaning House, and uh, he says that mm. the fact that he is opening it, or uh, he's running it, I'm sure, sure, sorry, he's working there, however we want to categorize it, means that it'll probably go until damn near sunrise. Yeah. Uh, Mike also <laughs> asks if you've ever had smoked ostrich. I have not had smoked ostrich. Um, uh, that actually sounds really good, though, because ostrich is a uh, red meat. There was a, a guy my uncle yeah, worked works. for uh, in the early 2000s, um, that uh, had an ostrich farm. Allegedly. Yeah, maybe. So You I, didn't understand that reference? Yeah, I, I, okay. I, I get all you. Right, all right, all right. I get you. It was a little bit of a little bit of a, a pull there, I don't oh. know. A stretch. You're talking about an ostrich. Yeah, I'm not an ostrich fucker. Yeah, that's true. Allegedly. Allegedly. Um, but uh, so this I guy gave my uncle a case of ostrich meat slim jims essentially is yeah. what they were it was called ostrim it was marketed as like a health product i think at the oh. time or something i loved it yeah. nobody else they, they took one and everybody in the family like took a bite and was like oh this is terrible uh, i took one and i was like give me that box yeah they're super That's lean but shit, man, man are they good uh, yeah really lean it's like venison very red yep. you know people think that every bird is supposed to be cooked well done no. ostrich is very red uh, very lean should be cooked like your steak and is tasty it's a good, you know, and they make a pretty good wallet. I had an ostrich wallet. Uh, oh, see, about I, I never got into the ostrich textured leathers. I, I never got into that whole thing. Only because I saw it, and I was like, had all the little bumps from where the uh, feathers came out. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that looks cool. What is that? And like, oh, it's ostrich. I was like, <laughs> boom, give it. <laughs> I looked was that up for like right eight or nine years. I've never seen an ostrich leather. Um, oh, really? But I've got uh, Ian, another friend of the show. He would wear ostrich boots. I can picture him wear, <laughs> wearing them. I, I, I can't dispute that. Uh, but I've got Just him making ostr- some some uh, lovely man bags for me. Actually, I opted my Christmas present this year from Shannon uh, to be uh, my laptop bag. Nice. That he's going to hand make for me. That's awesome. Uh, so I'll have to take a look there. Yeah, it kind of looks like... Uh, Mostly like a cow that had chicken pox. You, you got like you got to experience it in person. Yeah. It is unique. It's I, got all those. Yeah, it's got all the bumps where the feathers come out of the skin. Yeah, that, that's, that's a pretty good way of. That's probably yeah. The best so the trail. Looking at it, it's uh, it's interesting. So, but, so did you carry your wallet in your back pocket? Like, did I you did. just have I, a I bunch of fucking dimples in your ass? Because it was ostrich. I got it because it looked cool. And it yeah, was, but, it was but functional. Like, it had you know, lots of little pockets in it. Was but it when it, you close it, it was flat black with all these little. Bumps, but not bumps like, like you know, French dildo bumps. It yeah, was like little whoa, whoa, whoa. nubs. I'm not an expert on French dildos. Can you uh, oh, yes, describe you the difference? <laughs> no, I, I go American, sir. 
I'm a patriot. The, the uh, if you want to describe the differences between American and French dildos, I'd be happy to uh, to hear well, what you got to say about it. One of them hurts your throat, and one of them doesn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. And they usually have uh, plastic forks sticking out, and they're called Frank. It sounds like a good time. Nothing's yeah. hurt my throat for a long time. Uh, yeah. No, I, I don't know. I'm looking at that leather and just thinking, like, man. You must, your ass must be numb at the end of the day yeah. with all them spikes sticking into you, oh, uh, sitting in them New York diners, no, it's a real ignoring soft, your police car radio. It's a really soft no, weather, okay. like really soft weather. Yeah. We yeah. have tough asses in New York. Yeah, I, you I, realize I that imagine. like you just opened up like a thousand comments. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Well, it's it's on the outside of the ass, not the inside. It's not my prison wallet. Okay, it's my regular wallet. Wait, you didn't clarify which one of those was tough. <laughs> I mean, I guess when when you're a cop and you sit on it all day, just driving around, smoking cigars, and not nah, throwing them out the window. Well, I, I don't know if you were if you're this far beer. in yet, but I like to imagine you as the guy at the counter at Monk's Diner in Seinfeld, where he's like scared that Joe Devolo is going to beat him up in the street. He's like, "Can you walk me to the car?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah. Well, let me let me just get a muffin," and then it turns into a big fiasco because then he orders like a, a sandwich or something else. He's like, "I thought you were oh, just getting yeah, a muffin." Oh yeah, yeah, I did see that one. <laughs> yeah. I think that, that, that's Joe based DeVolo. on Tommy. Yeah. Kick me in the head. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I know that cop. <laughs> well, Papa Rocky. I don't know the cop. I know the episode. What? Yeah, I don't know if you're there yet. Okay. Crazy Joe DeFolo, man. Mm. Fucking helmet Crazy saved Joe. his life. I, I, he's Today's been in a from, couple episodes. They, I think they, I, there's like a, a, a plethora of characters that oh, come out man. of that show. Yeah, I yeah, think that's one I've just got uh, into. So many different people. Kramer, Kramer and comes small, in with that head players. injury. Yeah, he only players. only shaved half of his face. He's got one pant leg in his pants, but he's got the belt <laughs> yeah. the whole way around his waist. Yeah. Jerry's like, uh. What the hell uh, are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good time. That's cool, Jerry. My, cool. my son my son ate like, uh, he ate something, only half of it, which was inappropriate, and put it in the fridge. And I reminded him of the episode where. Uh, as Jerry said to Kramer, I'm going to start keeping track of all the food that you eat. <laughs> right? right? He had a running tab, and he comes in, he walks in, he goes into the fridge, and he's like a half-eaten apple. And Easy. he only has a half an apple written down on the price sheet. He's like, you can't just take a half an apple. You get the whole apple. <laughs> and then he like, gets his bill at the end of the month. He's like, ooh. ooh. He's like, I don't have time to explain that. the process of decomposition to you, but when you pierce the skin of a fruit, you bought the whole yeah, fruit. Yeah, it's yours now. <laughs> <laughs> It's done. It's yours. That's a good time for sure. Oh, fantastic. So when's uh when's your next trip up to Pittsburgh going to be? I'm guessing it's going to be warmer when it, uh, when you show up next. It's going to be warmer, but I think Dave at Leaning House his birthday Dave. is in May. Yeah. And he's throwing like a big old shindig. Uh, Every year. If I don't get there before then, I'm definitely going to be there for that. All right. So so at, at the earliest. One of the things that the late. one of the things I'm doing at my shop is as soon as you walk in, you'll turn left. The first shelf on your left. Is going to be, uh, you know, line of duty, protocol, above and beyond, Los Cayotos. Uh, all you uh, got. No, all... no, 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 wait, wait, stop. I know, I know. Ooh. Just let it go. I, I don't know. No. Get him. Come on. Get him. Come on. Uh, that's between I'm you guys. I'm your guest. That's between your you guys. Guest. Get him. Uh, that's between you guys. I'd <laughs> like to give uh, Tommy the floor. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I'm your guest, bro. It's like inviting someone over to the house and then kicking them in the balls. I mean, he did put you first. But I, I put you first, and I just kind of slid it in the middle, and I wasn't going to, like, bring That's it up. I was said. just going to, like. You should have just skipped it. I, sh I, I almost did, too. But uh, So it, it's funny because I was at a couple of shops in Florida on this trip, and nice one guy, uh, Charlie, uh, with the cigars on the boulevard, had us right next to each other. And oh, I said, look, shit. I don't care if you carry them. It's all great. I said, just don't put us next to each other because he's – you know, my red, blue, and yellow uh, is, is uh, blue, red, and yellow is mine. Right. I, had to, I had to explain to him what the yellow meant. Because he thought, <laughs> oh, green, 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 military. I had to explain He's to him that as a kid, you put yellow ribbons on the trees to honor the military. Right. So what is what, what happens? You saw what happened. Yeah. So I said, just don't put them next to each other. I said, but I want all the police, fire, and military stuff to be kind of next to it, you know, together. I said, that's fine. I'm not going to tell you how to run your shop. All I'm asking you is that you separate so they realize that the quality they're getting from me is not the quality they're getting from them. So, uh, and he's like, yeah, so I came in the next day and he totally separated it, and that's fine. He, run your store the way you run your store. So my, my shop set up in modules. You said at least put a right? box so, of rubbers in between them, right? Four, <laughs> four foot wide, eight foot tall shelves, two deep. Um, 
Uh, it, uh, and, and I'll set it up appropriately, but I am going to have my first responders in my military you. sector. That's that, Nobody, you know? Nobody's ever accused me of going too deep. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, no, I am going to keep, like, all of – anybody who gives anything back, they're going to be together yeah. as far as that, that group. So, I, I'll, you know, somebody will be eye level. Somebody won't. That's all I'm going to say. So, and, and you're <laughs> on the show. So you take the implication where you do. Uh, <laughs> I, give you, I give you less than a year. <laughs> Give me less than a year, damn. Yeah, less than a year. They'll be on the discount shelf. Oh, there you oh, go. Wow. Okay, that was a little different than I, I was going to say. I didn't, listen, I didn't mention any company. If you were giving him less than a year before his opening date, it might have been the mi- nicest thing that anybody said to him recently. I, I, listen, I, th- I thought this is open conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to give you a treat, Tommy. This is my present to oh, you. Oh, you son of a uh, Sam's going to get to read. Uh, this is actually an easy one compared oh, yeah, to dude, what I've been like doing lately. Yeah. Oh, uh, Sam's going to read the, week's is gonna be the, uh, great. the new members of the Facebook group. So, yeah. Tommy, if you're not already, you should get to uh, Facebook and uh, join the Cigar Junkies podcast Yeah, we have group. a lot of fun on there. And, uh, yeah. And as a uh, guest on the show, you are now allowed to. Advertise your stuff on on you the page. Are. You are indeed. once you're on the show, I you can put your advertisements up. That's how you get on. By the way, for anybody who's curious and gets banned from the group, that's why you got banned. Well, there's been other things too. No, but there's lots we of shall things. not yeah. discuss. Um, but yeah, feel free <laughs> jump in. You know, when you have an event going on anywhere, you know that's fantastic. You know, we just ask that it's not every day, but other than that, you're good to go. All right. So our new gr- uh, members for the group are Robert Burgett. Rob Pittard, Glenn Young, Jose Guerrero, Pat Richards, Khalid. Oh, that's why you wanted me to do it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a lot of vowels here. Um, Khalid El Sharkawi. Eh, I think I got that pretty close. Uh, Ahmad Afifi, uh, Zayad Mohammed. So, welcome to the group, guys. You guys are officially junkies. So. Uh, yeah, if they were listening to the show, they not, might not be anymore. I yeah. don't, I don't know how those people with those types of names feel about. They have deer. to be used to it. Like yeah, they they have to be used to the. Yeah, yeah, I was no, just thinking. Yeah. There's yeah. no. Yeah. As long as you're not making fun and saying, "Well, listen, you can't." You know my name. I get weather, wither. I don't give a fuck. Like oh. it's just not, it's I was thinking the, more along the lines of the venison talk, but I think the beef's the only thing that's really sacred. Oh. And some of I those. I thought we were parts. talking about his last name, and I was like, dude, yeah. I was thinking of the little freaking caramel things that old people like handed out in the night the ones with the, the cream in the middle uh, no 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 just like yeah, the, the I hard, wish. Oh, were there's original there's, yeah, yeah. Were there's original. Yeah, Dude, yeah, it's not a bad oh. time i used to hate them as a kid and now i'm kind of like now that i bring it up i'm kind of like oh, you're like shit nice. yeah, i'm old <laughs> sounds kind of nice caramel that, that, shoes are amazing oh dude yeah the caramel it's ones with, with that like oh, weird crystalline sugary like cream middle like yeah i don't know why this is good but i need five five hundred more in my mouth right now get the cow tail yeah. Well, we, well Halloween. Did you just more say, in your mouth, right? yes, did you you just get say you need a get Werther him. in your mouth? Oh. Is that what you just implied? I said I needed something with a creamy center in my mouth hole, I believe, is, is actually how I phrased it. So you enjoy that. I, right. I did lay that out. Right. I'm not going to walk away from it because it's, it's being recorded, so there's no point. Yeah. Sam's never walked away from anybody that's been laid out. Um, he'll take it where he can get it. Uh, that's just generally yeah. his motto. <laughs> Uh, 20 bucks is 20 uh, bucks. His pants, cr- his pants were down when I found them, officer, <laughs> I swear. I swear to God. Yeah, but where did the beer bottle come from that was stuck in there? Jesus Christ. Yeah, well, that, that's mine. That's <laughs> yeah, that was all me. That's why I, did I, I did it for the grams. Why I don't drink craft beer. I prefer to keep it light. Uh, you know, whatever happens, happens. But uh, Really? I thought you were going to say you were more of a wine bottle kind of guy. Yeah. Well, that's why I go, I, I'm a keg only. You know. yeah, yeah, just full keg. That's it. And do me a favor, uh, don't put it in neck in first this time. Right. I uh, didn't on. even feel it. Fell right out. Uh, this oh, we week, the participants. Oh, all right. All right. I don't know what he said. I have no idea what he said either. Yeah, you can well, say it again. I'll give you some room. Yeah. Boom. Go. I said you can't drink from it if it goes neck in. Uh, you never going to ask the mouth? You you can, just not from your mouth hole. Uh, you can use the other heat one. at the moment. It's like, an, it's it's like a, it's an alcohol IV. You just put it in there, keep on rolling. It's 2022, man. Like, There's a lot of kinks that aren't so taboo anymore. You know, whatever <laughs> whatever gets your boat to the ocean is good I'm, for the gander. I'm at, I'm at Famous Smoke uh, yesterday morning, and I'm walking around the humidor. I come out, I go to pay, and I look at the TV. Are you a South Park guy? Have you seen much of the show South Park? Uh, I, I could give you some highlights. That's about it. Not uh, not Tom, a dedicated watcher. Tom, have you done much of it? 
Uh, again, I think I'm in the same boat as Corey. Did you guys ever see the the Dick Mouse? No. Like that I don't remember that it's, being in the boat. No. It's this rat with just this giant schlong sewn into it. That the I'm, I can't wait to figure out how this ties in the famous. Go, go on. No, no, I just that's why it's funny because I'm like, wait, why is this on at famous right now? Like, and it sings. The dick sings. Oh. I mean, it has a very beautiful voice. Your motto, your oh, yeah. your your mascot's a fucking sausage. My mascot is a, is a cowboy hat. Damn it! Uh, I don't know. We just tip the hat. That's all. Just the tip means. You, sh- you should get a little. Feel free uh, to argue different. A little cowboy hat for the silly sausage. Maybe you could steal one from a Woody doll. No, I. Uh, there is a cowboy hat on the silly sausage for when Heather got the yeah. participation trophy. Yeah, but you need a physical model. Hey, well, uh, that's that's enough. Of that. All right, all right. Participation trophy of the week goes to. This is the first time I'm gonna have to uh, award this as a shared honor. Uh, it's going to go to Christopher Collins and James Manges or Mangez uh, and all the other junkies who have served. Uh, at the time of uh, creating the notes, those were the only two that responded to your post. Jeffrey Scales was in there yeah. as well, Je- but Jeff Jeff, Scales. Jeff's already been honored. Yeah, so, so Je- uh, Jeff Scales, Christina Scales, um, Rob Roth. I'm trying to think who else I know for a fact is a vet. Um, but yeah. Thank you for your service. We guys. know you're not familiar, Tommy. We 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 uh, create a, a little certificate uh, with the. We don't have a trophy, but we'll give you a, a print get, of a trophy. You get a digital. Uh, my understanding is that most people will print that out and uh, take their college degree out of the frame yeah, and replace it, it with like the, 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 the that, that is the most popular thing. Yeah. Yeah. You, should them, you should send them. You should send them a dick mouse. A dick mouse. Uh, Do you like the dick mouse? The might be a name thing. Name and the dick. Uh, yeah. I, my phone's being utilized right now. I really need to find the dick mouse because you, you uh, I, Tom, after I this, I will you send the you the, I will send you a link to the YouTube video of it because it is freaking hysterical. This thing's running around from all the townsfolk and all it is is the silhouette of his dick singing like in the moonlight. Like, <laughs> ah, just going to town. You're not, not, you're not, not into they that. They had a name. Did they actually call it dick mouse? I don't remember. I, 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 I can't remember what they actually called it. I didn't, I didn't stay to watch the whole episode while I was there. It was right, so right. W- let's talk about your venture yeah, out that's east what I was gonna say. Uh, and, and the different uh, shops that you hit. What did you find impressive? What so, did you find disappointing? All right. We we generally try and avoid negativity other than like talking to each other or guests. Yeah, so, yeah. Know. We shit on each other. Oh yeah. Generally as not as much brands. as possible. So um I will say we might be like that Tommy guy was a fucking asshole, but we won't talk shit about your brand. Yeah, but we're gonna say it to me. Yeah. Oh yeah, but we'll say it to you. Like that that is the one thing you guys can be certain of. We're yeah. gonna talk shit to you. We will talk shit to, uh, <laughs> behind your back, right to your face. Mm-hmm. So we left Pittsburgh, we headed out and uh we got to CI in Hamburg around it was like ten thirty in the morning. Uh, cool place, really, really, I, I, I love the layout. Impressive physically. Like, yeah, like, the way that it was set up was really cool. You had the pool table underneath, the, like, uh, a mezzanine that kind of wrapped on, like, two-thirds of it. Uh, you had a bar upstairs, bar downstairs. There's a balcony that goes out and around that there's, like, one area you can stand and look at that's, like, a really pretty view, and the rest of it is just highway. So, like, watch out for that marketing-wise. If you don't get, like, one of three seats, you're looking at tractor trailers. Um, but, it, I mean, they have everything they have on CI, you know, at this store, just smaller quantities. Mm. And I will say they're – look, I'm a boutique guy. I, I, I prefer boutique cigars. I like the uniqueness of – like, your 470 has a very unique flavor to it. This, this for Lojiso has a very unique flavor to it, which I'm still – debating on which one i like more so which is good because the 470 is pretty high up on my list it's good um, it's a good problem man. yeah exactly like oh which one of these is my two and which one's my three you know like whatever um because you know you know which one's number one already you guys will be on the same shelf um <laughs> <laughs> um so moving on so all that was awesome that you know i like the fact that one of the things that i couldn't do with my shop efficiently was have two separate areas for people to sit. So, like, I have the conference room, but long-term, that's going to go away. Um, I like that you had areas where you could sit and you can get away from – because we've all been there. You're in a lounge. There's one guy who's loud. He's obnoxious. Or you're and just his name a is bad, Sam. Yeah, well, there's usually that. But you just can't <laughs> – you can't get away from him. Like, you sit in certain lounges. There's nowhere to go other than, like, this one circle that you have to sit in, and they have bad acoustics. And – that I like that they broke that up really well. And then there's like a 
like a homage to veterans room so it, they, they do have like a room that's nothing but flags and eagles and talking about you know good stuff their cigar selection was not what i was hoping for uh i was figuring that they would have some of the boutique stuff at least some of the boutique stuff they carry on ci uh i mean the the cigar i bought was from a brand that i really really like but was like a budget one that i never had before because and i now know why no one carries it uh, i don't want to get into what it is and all that but you know it it, it was very disappointing uh for that brand I want to cut in your review, just so you know. I don't have ten minutes for every shop here. I'm trying no, to wrap no, no. up in the next no, five. No. <laughs> Fam <laughs> Famous will be quicker. Uh, I, but overall, the it, it would be a really cool place for a party. It would be a lot of fun. Uh, and then yeah. I, I got to Famous, and we we drove there the night before because they were already closed. And I I pulled up the place, and I'm like, holy shit! It's the size of a Walmart. Like it it is. Well, it's, I mean, it's it, it, and a lot of it is because they do their online yeah. distribution right from that building. Yeah. I, I I described it as like you're going to be like, oh, this is Dude, following the GPS. You're like, it's back here. You did not lie when we talked about that. It is in the middle of nowhere. Like the only thing notable on the way there is the giant Dixie cup, yeah, the Crayola factory Zippo. Yeah, yeah the like cup. I came from the other way, so I, I I didn't even get that. Like it's just this giant in the Zippo. middle of farmland. There's cows and shit yeah. ne next door. Yeah, so. it, it was it, but uh, and I like that. I think it's cool. Went in their humidor, really good humidor, but a really good humidor in the same level as like, you know, like Old Allegheny here. I don't think I saw anything there that I don't see at Old Allegheny. But uh, more I saw, selection than CI, I would guess. Yeah, much better selection than CI. Um, not as good of a selection as Smoke here in, in yeah, Pittsburgh. Yeah. Like Smoke has a much better curated humidor. They got more probably more stuff there, but but not but, not like, but they have more the little brands. Like it's, the, it's not the even interesting that. they have more it's not they don't even have more like individual skew like skews as far as like blends. Like they have more of Yeah, but you're not going you're not going there famous for their selection of cigars. Right. Like you you can cause you can get that online. You're going there for the experience of being able to have a nice meal at the at the what's it called the Leaf Lounge? Yeah, and or, I, I, that I, was all closed. The, but going into that experience there and hanging out and having a, a burger and then sitting out, you know, either outdoors or in the front lounge somewhere, because yeah. you don't get that everywhere. That's exactly where I was I was going with it. Is I got there too early. I think I missed all of the best parts of it. Like I got there at ten o'clock when they opened because we had a meeting oh, to yeah, go yeah. to, and the Leaf Lounge doesn't open until noon. So like I I sat there and peered in the window and looked through and like it it the the restaurant and the lounge look or the bar look amazing, and they have like a little lounge outside of the uh, humidor itself and and it, that was really cool, uh, and then I got to Casa de Monte Cristo and that kind of blew my mind in Jersey that I went to the one in Vegas and this one was way better, this it, and I expected it to be a whole lot more of an altitus just propaganda ground. And it wasn't like I mean they had Ferry Ortega, Room One Hundred One, Black Label. Uh, I think they have you guys in there too. No, yeah. the one in Whitman? typically they only sell what they own. So like the guys in Manhattan won't won't carry us. They wouldn't carry Black Label. That's a corporate decision. No, uh, the, now maybe the Jersey one is different. But yeah, the, I was just saying they, def York, they, they definitely they had won't. Black Label, Ferry Ortega. I mean they had General Cigars, they had Altidus, they had Rocky Patel, they had Padron. I mean, the humidor in this place was probably 65 by 40. It, it was enormous, and it was just rows and rows and rows. Uh, and it, certain things I didn't like about it was, like, a lot of the cigars were behind, like, glass where, like, the guys were standing, but they weren't, like, high-value cigars that, like, you needed to protect. Like, you got your $50, $60 cigars that are out in the open where we can go, but you don't have – you know in in the case you've got seven and eight dollar yeah, cigars yeah. and i'm like wait that doesn't like i'm cool with wait, waiting sense. for somebody to come get me a cigar that i want because like I, I wanted a, a placentia uh compo I, I love that cigar i i still don't know why i love that cigar so much but i love that cigar uh you know 12 bucks 14 bucks i think it was in jersey so i go over and i get it and i'm like okay i gotta wait there a couple minutes for them to go through the customers and get me the cigar and i'm like but there's no reason for it like it doesn't hey, you could it's just, not necessary yeah. when you've got 50 dollars cigars 100 dollars cigars sitting out right next to the door right the, the davidoff uh advertisement their, their section of the humidor 
is the closest thing to the door. And I'm like, from a security point of view, like that seems silly. Yeah. Like that's, you put the valuables in the back, I thought. And it, it, so that's the only critique I had of that place. Other than that, it was a beautiful venue. Uh, there's like a main lounge and then there's a couple private rooms that you can rent. The bar was beautiful. Uh, and then behind it, I, I like the fact that they sell bottles there and they're not too high marked up. Like I think a bottle of Angel's Envy Rye was like 84 bucks. Which I think it's 90 here. Yeah, I think it's 90 in Pennsylvania anyway. So like uh, that's home run. Yeah, it, yeah, it's like, okay, so they, they support the BYOB kind of. I mean, you buy it here, but you're still paying the same price you would if you got it somewhere else. Or if you want to just get one drink at a time from the bar, you can do that. So I, I really respected Will that. They let you, can you leave with the bottle whenever you don't drink? You better be able to. You, I mean, I would assume so. Uh, you, you try to stop me walking out the door. That's all I know. Yeah, I mean, if I buy a $90 bottle, <laughs> have three drinks out of it, I'm taking it. <laughs> That's yeah, it works out. If you disagree, I'm sorry. I, had a guy, I, I was at a, I, uh, at a steakhouse upstate New York, and we wanted a second bottle, and it was like a $120 bottle of wine. And I was the only one who had to drink out of it. And I, and I knew I wasn't allowed to leave with it. So I was like, dude, distraction, put it in my, my waistband, <laughs> I covered my shirt, got out to the car. Dude, I swear to God, I got to the car, took the bottle out, put it in, in the back seat started the truck and then i get a knock on the window and it was the waiter <laughs> the waiter says uh where's that bottle i said what bottle maybe another the bottle. I go, where's that bottle of wine I, go, I, I don't know i just left it. he's like sir if i don't return that bottle i get in trouble now i don't know if he was full of shit but i felt bad yeah i just I, spent a lot of money on that bottle only had one drink out. yeah i bought the bottle nah, i gave it to him i gave it to him i said all right dude i said no, it, he goes i get it yeah. he's like you spent a lot of money for the bottle he says but we get in trouble if every bottle is not accounted for. Yeah. I mean, someone took it out, and then they get in trouble because you can't leave with a bottle. They have to prove that they and have the I just empties. pulled off, but I wasn't going to be a dick. Yeah. Because um, he didn't then. do anything wrong. It's his boss. Yeah, it wasn't him. I could have, I don't know, found a way to empty it and stuff. But it's, this is ghetto shit, you know, <laughs> filling up solo cups with, with, with red right. wine. You should have emptied it into your water bottle. Uh, but... Uh, I do have to hit the road here, so I'm going to ask Tommy if you, you've got anything uh, you've got to say uh, closing here. Last opportunity to get your plugs in. Any uh, it, website man. directions yeah, no. you want to give? Dude, plug simply uh, www.lineofdutycigars.com. Use JTT as your code for 20% off. I'll run that till Wednesday. Uh, appreciate you guys having me on on a, on a Friday night. And it is Friday, right? Yeah, it's Friday. Yep. <laughs> uh, for now. Yeah, no, this is awesome, man. I, uh, I I appreciate the format, too. Not the, you know, let's all talk about cigar. No, we're just like regular guys hanging out, bullshit, and breaking balls. Like, it's, that format doesn't really exist. That's um, why we're here. As far as I can see in our industry. So just being able to bullshit and hang out and really kind of turn the filter off, uh, I appreciate. Yeah, we try to dedicate at least like five minutes an episode to cigar talk, and then the rest of the time it's uh, yeah, whatever dick, and, dick and fart jokes yeah. and tv references you know yeah. um but uh we appreciate you joining us today uh i had a, a great experience with the line of duty grunt uh i will definitely yeah. buy it again that is not something you you hear me say often on this yeah. show uh i will spend money on that cigar yeah. uh it was definitely a good time and uh worth every second of it uh good experience uh so yeah i mean as far as i'm concerned not only are you looking at a great cause but you're getting a great product out of it as well uh, it's definitely worth your money. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so make sure that you guys join us every Friday at 6 p.m. when we air the show live on the Facebook group, and you can catch us on YouTube uh, or your favorite podcast platform. Next week, we'll be smoking the Romeo and Julieta 1875, Connecticut, Nicaragua. Uh, and as always, you can get our merchandise, our T-shirts, as Sam's got, at thegalaxyboutique.com. Use code JUNKIES for free shipping site-wide. Yeah. Russians we for get, the end there. We get through the